One but I, I still have I still have one sausage left over, Jay. You know what? I'm gonna eat it on the pre-show. Wow, you eat that sausage, man. I'm Show a, me your sausage eating skills. I'm a, this sausage is gonna be all up in my mouth. It may not be very Lovely. big, but it's so delicious. <laughs> mm. There's already someone in chat. Holy crap. Noob Helios. Hypers. Wow. What's up, man? Hypers. Hypers. Slip repeat as well. Hey, man. Yo. One creative mind. Everyone's hey. here. Hey, if everyone, there you go. Just those, those three yeah. people. Well, that's all we need. That's 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 all the important people, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, there are quite a few important people, I would say. But uh, mm. sausage, you say? Yes, yeah, sausage. All you, all you people that are here super early, get to watch me eat a sausage on stream. Lovely. So I just bite off the tip. That's how you start. Wow. And then this, this is this is actually my next level move, Jay. I turn it around. I bite off the other tip. Wow, you like both tips at the same time. I like it. Yeah. yeah, so that's like, that's like the pro strat if you're not aware. Right. Okay. Okay. And then what do you do with the rest of it? Just like one mouthful, or just nibble each side, or take it in turns? Or... Um, I'm still working on that part. I'm thinking. I mean, if if, if, if I'm coming to the U.S. for Seattle, I need to learn how to eat sausages <laughs> in American style, right? <laughs> Properly eat the sausage. Yes. <laughs> Um, well, if we're being American, we, yes, we just shove it in our mouth all at once. Right, okay, okay. And we make some kind of manly grunting lumberjack noise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I'll, uh, I'll get practiced on that. Alright, I believe in you. I've got the Rage and Asian, good old Ray with his tier one sub, subscribed for 15 months, saying, oh, whoa. Ooh, woo. Ooh, woo. Thanks, Ray. It's a sausage fest in here. You know it, man. It's one of the best kind of fests. fests. Slim Thickens. What's up, man? I love that username, by the way. Slim Thickens. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> good evening, Nice Walker visionary. as well. Walker with his... Uh, 12 months. Twitch Prime subs. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, Walker. Mechs on deck in the house. Ola to you as well. Uh, this is now, just our... Do you think our... that's a or do you think that's chewy? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's chewy. Yeah, I think it will be as well. Yeah. This is just our usual pre-show, making sure everything goes all right. Wait for people to slide on in here. Waiting for the bot to ping as well, of course. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, it's chewy? Yeah, I didn't even hesitate, man. It's gotta be chewy. It's gotta be chewy. I feel like Osiris is too busy of a person. That he probably doesn't have time to tune in or something. Sure. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know much about maybe, maybe their, either of like their personal me. lives. That's what he just doesn't yeah. like. He, maybe he doesn't like me. I don't know. Yeah, I, I assume there's several people in the community that do not like me. Can't please them all, man. Can't please them all. Nope. That's why I gave up trying. <laughs> <laughs> we just try to please who we can. Uh, yes, cows in that class. The audio is now at 256 kbps, which means that my audio should be clearer. Yeah, you, you sound noticeably clearer than previous episodes, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm. I'm because obviously I hear you through my through Discord, Brian, rather than over the stream. I'm, you're you're a lot clearer on on here as well. Yeah, what's funny as I'm sure, I'm sure you saw it, Jay, but we so we had ten. We had the proper amount of boosts for level two, and then like an hour yeah. before the stream, someone it took dropped. away their boost, <laughs> and so we dropped to nine. And I was like, well, I guess I'm doing nitro now, so I upgraded to nitro Ooh. and I had to boost it just just so we could get the better audio for this episode. <laughs> Please, guys, consider boosting this server if you have Nitro. And before everyone removes that boost now, we oh drop midstream. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of great channels, a lot of great servers to boost, trust me, but how many of them actually benefit on a production level from that? Yeah. Yeah. I think the Mechs on Dex guys would do as well. I think they use Discord for, for their voice as well, actually, so... 
Yep, there you go. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so Shimi says, I think there's a grace period after you drop a level. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. I, I don't think it mentions that, actually. Let me read. No, I'm pretty, Let me. I'm pretty, I, had to, I had to reset all of the audio channels back to 256 after we dropped to 9 earlier. Oh, okay. So it definitely doesn't then. Right. Yeah, it was, okay. it was like instant. Like right after you told me that, I looked and be, it had been dropped. And I had to, and after I boosted it again, it, I had to bring it all back up. Yeah, it's, it's really silly. But I mean, I, I guess you have, to, you have to realize that I guess most people doing Discord servers aren't using them for the same way that we're using them. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Most of them are uh, using them for video games, I would assume. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not a perm, Mr. Petrov. It's just my natural... Uh, this is how it looks after I've showered and run my fingers through it. <sighs> now the important people start popping in. You guys are all important people. You're here before the bot even ping the server. That's pretty important. That makes, yeah, it is. That means it's you true. actually give a damn. <clears throat> oh, uh, Brian, chat's not on stream. Chat's not on stream? Yeah, it's not showing. Actually, it's a good point because I can't see either. I don't read chat from there, but yeah, it's right. It's not there. It's listed on there. Hold on, let me try Have to you hidden it? refresh it, I guess. <sighs> see, this, guys, this is what happens when you just can't get this is... that, I'm afraid. This is so weird. It shows it working in the preview. Just refresh the applet. That should work. Uh, just while Brian's fixing that, uh, Talisman Solution, thank you very much for the 1,111 bits. Uh, you're now at 101,111. So thank you very much, dude. We genuinely appreciate that. Uh, thank you for all of the support. Okay, I'm going to have to remove the chat and then reinstall it. Give me a second. No! <laughs> I... I don't know what else to do. It was working in the preview. <clears throat> this is news. Scuffed stream. Yeah, well, Brian's in charge. What do you expect, man? <laughs> wow, feels bad, man. <laughs> you know what I mean. This is news, not build. Oh, did you go live with the wrong title as well? What? No, no I did no, not do that. Need... I changed it. Yeah, I need... yeah that's, yeah, that's guys, Geo. You guys <laughs> trying to mess with me here. Uh, <clears throat> chat yeah, is literally just like not working right now. I don't. Rip. I don't know. Like when I bring up the properties, it shows it working totally fine. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, the window, and it just doesn't show it on on stream for me at all. Uh, Manny Blocks, thank you very much for the 200 bits, dude. Genuinely appreciate that, and I thoroughly appreciate your support earlier on today. Thank you very much for that, dude, as well. Really appreciate that. And Matt and Blocks subscribed with the eight-month streak. Thank you, dude. Tier one sub for eight months now. Wow, that's 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 good going. That's good going, man. And Jershef as well with the eight months. Thank you, dude. Thank you. I don't know how to fix this. When I open up properties, everything's working totally fine. I can see the chat in real time when I open up the properties, but on stream, it's just not working. You've not got it hidden or no, no, I just to the bottom or no, I, I just changed the layers around. Nothing, nothing helped. It's on the uh, the topmost layer right now, anyways. Hmm. This is it. It might just be an issue with Streamlabs right now. Let me uh, let me quickly check Streamlabs uh, Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it does seem like a couple of people have been having problems with a few different features. Oh crap! Um. I know there's there's another there's another way to do it. I just can't remember. There's like a third party thing you can use, but it's been so long since I've used it. I can't remember what it is. We might just have yeah, to roll without chat today. Man, which is, which is well, the, 
really unfortunate, but... These things happen, man. I'm sure it's not your settings, Brian. I think it's. Uh, it sounds like it's probably something with Streamlabs because there, there's people saying that TTS and a few of the bits are failing within the last half an hour. So, um, I suspect they might be having a few problems. Hopefully, it'll pop back up. Yeah. Uh, gosh darn it. Um. Yeah, Mr. Petrov, I can see you as well. It's mainly for the VOD that we have the chat uh, nested in the stream so that people who watch the uh, the VODs online afterwards can, can see what was said in the chat at the time. Um, without that, the, the chat's kind of lost. It's kind of only available on Twitch until it disappears. So uh, it is useful for us to have chat in the stream view, but uh, if we if we can't do it, we won't. Yeah, sorry, OBS chat is broken right now. Who? Yeah. Can we get some uh, Fs in chat for uh, OBS chat, please? So, so silly! <laughs> oh, here we go. Let's do it F, 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 uh, George says, if you open a chat on the window, you can then set that as a browser capture and still see it. Oh, okay, that's that's not a bad idea. You could do that, Brian, if you if you wanted to set that up. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Let me, let me try that. Uh, hold on, I actually have to open the stream on Twitch then, because I don't normally have it open on Twitch. <clears throat> yeah, if you open it up on Twitch, and then just screen capture it. And yeah. It okay. Yeah, it just won't be transparent. Yeah, we can just move it to one side. And, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get this going, guys. Sorry. Sorry for the delay. Streamlabs just, uh, not being our friend today. Uh, uh, George just popped the link in there for you as well, if you want just the, uh, just the the chat pop out link. Yes. That is exactly uh, what Sellers. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it definitely. Wit Sellers joining saying, hey guys, hey man, good to see you, dude. We're just taking it slow, taking it steady, fixing a few technical difficulties, and then we'll uh, we'll get started. We're aware the bot's pinged, but uh, OBS is uh, having some problems at the minute with the chat, so we're just trying to fix that while Brian is. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's not a top clack issue, I'll be fair, and it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a Streamlabs issue, so... <clears throat> we'll get there soon. Don't worry, guys. Okay, making making progress here. Making progress. All right. Uh, well, I, I can see the chat. I just can't see you, Brian. In fact, actually, that might well, be an improvement. <laughs> wow, that hurts. <laughs> so, I'm joking. Hold I'm on, joking. it's been. Whoops. <laughs> Grabbed the wrong thing. Woo. Give me, give me a sec to try to resize this. I don't know how big this is going to be. He's spoiling all of our secrets doing it that way, dude. That's true. <laughs> Jay absolutely roasting Brian today. No, I'm just having a bit of fun. Just having a bit of fun. Jay's mean. Someone help me. <laughs> Can you not increase the font size in the browser window that you've got there, dude? Uh... Sheesh, I don't know. I guess I could... Hold on. Control, control and scroll usually does yeah, it. I think I can, if that's I can just do that, I guess. Oh, boys. There we go. The, the workaround. Uh, Gotta love a workaround. Wait, is that different to a reach around? Yes. Probably. Oh, okay. I don't know. <clears throat> is th this, this might have to do. How bad does that look actually on stream? I, it's not great, but it's better than no chat. Lumin says it looks amazing. <laughs> Talisman, I hope so. I hope so. <clears throat> it's ducky bit. This, so, yeah. this is so sketchy, man. <laughs> <laughs> sketchy top clack. Oh, uh, I don't. I don't know what else to do, man. That's that's gonna just have to be it for today. I'm sorry, you guys. Yeah, I, I agree, Brian. I don't know why he's not using dark mud either, but hey. Where? Well, so. Big big wine, big complain. I'm gonna turn <laughs> this stream around. All right, guys, don't don't test me. Well, Jayshif's already turning it around because he's just donated 500 <clears throat> sketch bits. So thank you very much for that, Jayshif. We <laughs> yes. Really appreciate the, <laughs> the silver lining and all this problem. Thank you so much, Jayshif. 
Um, <clears throat> is it is that pretty visible on stream though, or is it still like too small? Uh, yeah, it's all right. It's not too bad if I make the screen quite big. But look, I've got access to the actual chat, so I'm I'm all right. I hope everyone else can see it. I could. <laughs> I think the only thing you could do is maybe make text in your browser window a little bit bigger. You guys want dark mode? Everyone's asking for dark <clears throat> mode. I guess I can do that. Um, yeah, that's easier to read as well, actually. Okay. Is that good, guys? Can you guys understand that? Do you guys see that? Is that large enough for you? I can make it larger. It's just going to take me more time. I'm going to rescale things. Yeah, it needs a little bit more zoom, I think. Uh, yeah, Tefram, we know we can make it transparent if we use the actual feature, but the Streamlabs feature's down, which is why we're having to um, quickly uh, change up this uh, this version. Give it one more zoom. Okay, guys. Yeah, Control and Plus should zoom it in a little bit. No, no I, don't, I don't have a zoom. I was just trying to avoid doing it. All right, hopefully that's a little bit better. What do you guys think? That's, that's 150% right now. <clears throat> cool. That, there we go. Does that look there pretty go. good? It looks all right. It's passable for this week, I think. You know passable what I you know what I mean, Jay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it needs crevice lighting. That's really what it needs. Cre who said crevice lighting? That's that's great. I don't. Idea, yeah. no, I, I I'm saying it needs crevice lighting. Oh, okay. oh, no, 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 Talisman said that as well. It needs more crevice lighting, and it'll be perfect. Oh, did he? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this wouldn't happen on Nathan's stream? Wow, that hurts. Wow. Well, Mr. Petrov, Nathan may not use Streamlabs, but I'm pretty sure he does. No, he uses Stream Elements, I think. Oh, does he? Oh, okay. okay. Oops. Oops. Okay. Uh... Hold on, I gotta I gotta rechange some things around. Hold on, guys. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get this going. Sneak, I, sneak, I promise. I sne promise. Sneaky peek of our news dog there. Sneaky peek of our news doc. Yeah, I wasn't trying to do that, but that's just kind of how it happened. <clears throat> Nebula, Nathan's stream wouldn't exist without Top Rock. I don't think that's fair. I think it would exist. Oh yeah, that's pro it's, that's probably not know, fair at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I usually I what I usually do is I keep I keep my news doc up in the top right, but now I have to have Twitch chat in the top right. But I couldn't have it on the same browser, so I had to have a new browser with the news doc over the Twitch chat. So it didn't actually interrupt with the Twitch chat on the stream, guys. This is a nightmare. <laughs> I just uh, just, double, out, just double check the the, uh, the 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 widget's not working again, dude. <laughs> double check. Okay. Um, checkbox. Because if that widget's working again, that would be really funny. No, it doesn't seem like it's working. <clears throat> Mr. Petrov with one thousand five hundred MacGyvered stream uh, is best stream bits. Thank you very much, that dude. We really appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> you. That is that is most most positive of you. Okay, yeah, the other one, um, the other one's not working. So okay, cool. Let's... Right, okay, we'll just stick with this for now, guys. We know it's botched, but we'll get there. We'll cope with it. Uh, Mr. Keeps, thank you very much for the uh, the three month streak. Uh, sorry, the three month uh, of uh, subs at tier one, a uh, two month streak. Staying good evening, gents. Thank you very much for that, dude. Uh, okay, I think I think we're good. If everyone is as okay with the chat as they can be, I think we're good. It'll, it's the best we've got. It'll have to do. It, it'll have to do. Um, I can't mess around with it too much, or we'll just cut it to the show too much, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. We were already live for 20 minutes, so uh, I think we'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with that in mind, I'm just going to roll the intro now, and we'll get right into things. Hello, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's episode of Top Clack your weekly source for mechanical keyboard mumbo-jumbo and, uh, and else. I am Quakems. And else. And else. You like that? I am Quakems. Ooh. I'm joined by my co-host Jay, and we're going to talk all about keyboards today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, as usual, we have a pretty short news doc today, actually, uh, similar to last week. I guess all the news has kind of been uh, been blown over. We had uh, about, like two or three months of just absolute insanity, and now we're, we're kind of calming down now, and it's it's kind of nice yeah. in a way. How do you feel about that? 
I, I do feel good about that. It feels like everyone's going on vacation or holiday and just taking some time to chill and things are slowing down, which might mean that my wallet has time to recover from all of the <laughs> stuff we've had going on in the first half of the year. It could just be that, that nice lull at the middle of the year. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, We will see. So let's, uh, let's go right into our mail call here. Because you have quite a few things you've got this week. I have a couple things as well. So why don't you start us off, Jay? Uh, yeah, I've had quite a few things come in this week. So uh, the first thing, uh, shout out to 159 because he finally sent me some uh, red samurai kits. So I already had the base kit, but now I've got the novelties and the Nishi kit as well. So I've got pretty much every key in the red samurai set now. So thank you very much for that one. Uh, the second thing that I got this week uh, was GMK Hamon. So it comes in the lovely red banderol with the little piggy on it. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen this set, I'll show it off very, very briefly. There you go, guys. That's what the set looks like. Ooh, sparkly. Um, and to all of the people that kept telling me that the uh, ISO kit didn't make MOQ and I wouldn't get the ISO keys, um, I have them here. So uh, thank you very much for the doubting, guys. But it got made. It's here. ISO is available in GMK. Come on. So I'm happy with that as well. Uh, next, I got my... Uh, Sirius, so the Sirius 6 and turned up. So I've got a couple of plates, weight and POM case and all of that. So that's going to be on stream on Sunday. We're going to be building that on Sunday. We'll talk more about that later on. Um, I also got some cool caps from Tyler. Uh, so he sent me a Satis Clacken, which is for my Satisfaction 75, which is really cool. That matches GMK Chocolatier. So you can see the board's just behind me, actually. Uh, it's just up here behind me. I'll be putting that on the board on stream on Sunday as well, but that's really cool. Uh, he also sent me uh, from one of the r raffles that he ran. Uh, I've got four of the caps from him as well. So a couple of uh, different sculpts and different colorways and all sorts of things, as well as one that he's not run before, which is a prototype cap of the, uh, the keyboard cowboy, which is quite cool. Nice. So, uh, yeah, that's really cool. And then the final thing I got this week uh, is another keyboard, but this is a bit more of a uh, vintage stream. So uh, this is an old Desco keyboard. So this has got vintage browns in it and an OG key set, but it's got an R5 bottom row, so I'm definitely going to be reusing these keys. Um, I just need to work out on what board now. How do those so vintage go. browns feel? Uh, they're pretty good, actually. They're pretty oh, good. Okay. Um, yeah, nicer than I was expecting them to be. I thought they'd just be like browns and... I wouldn't like them. They do feel almost linear, and I think if I lube them, they will feel very linearized, but they are really, really smooth, so um, it's clearly had a lot of use as this board. Straight Class is asking you to post a pic of that keyboard cowboy, maybe in the Artisan channel, after the stream. Uh, okay, I, I will do that straight after the stream. Remind me right at the end, Straight Classy, and I will uh, I will post a pic of the keyboard cowboy. Yep, and uh, speaking of Classy, I got a, I got something in courtesy of him, so I, I've been having him do some lube work for me, and uh, I got a bunch of switches back, which I forgot to grab to show off, but uh, you know, they're switches, you guys know what it looks like, but he also has stickers now, which I thought was really cute. Nice. So they say straight Classy lube switches, that's pretty cute, and he has a little, little well, what, what I think is a heart, but I don't think he knows how to draw a heart very well, but this is kind of cute. Uh. <laughs> it just says thanks, that's very, very nice, I like that. Um, and on, in the same vein, I actually got uh, some stickers from Starston as well. Starston. Oh, nice. These, uh, these nice. Type Beast stickers, which are pretty nice. I got a few of those. I think I'm going to put one on sticker. the bottom of my Sirius. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah, that should be pretty cool. Um, also, I also forgot to grab it, but it's still all boxed up anyway, so I'm not going to unbox it now anyways. Um, I got a TGR910RE, the, uh, the aluminum Ooh. version. And, oh, nice. um, <clears throat> yeah, not mine, unfortunately. Not mine. But I am going to be build streaming that tomorrow for someone. And that's going to be nice. really fun because it'll actually be the first TGR board I've ever built. So I'm really oh really wow that. yeah wow enjoy it man they are good boards to build I've 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 done two nine tens I think both just blew me away one was aluminium and one was uh, polycarb but uh, um, yeah both blew me away really good quality yeah I'm looking forward to it. I gave it kind of a look over already and looks pretty nice pretty hefty little boy. I'm oh yeah, they're pretty hefty for the size. Yeah, so that's uh, that's actually all I got. That's all I got. But we have a couple of announcements, of course. Um, Nitro Boost has been going strong, as you can possibly hear if you've been paying attention. We did hit level two, which <coughs> means we have even higher audio quality. 
which is why Jay actually sounds a little bit better than he normally does. Yeah, it should sound a little bit clearer. It should sound a little bit clearer. That was terrible. I don't know why I did that. Yep. Um, so also with the level two perks, we do get a banner for our Discord, which is pretty cool. And uh, we were kind of toying around with ideas of how we want to do that. And yeah, we could just like slap a Talk Talk logo on there or like do our own pictures or whatever. But we thought it'd be cool to make it kind of like a Twitch subscriber benefit. So if you are like a Twitch subscriber and you link your Twitch account into your Discord under your Discord settings um, and the purple chat channel will show up for you. And uh, we're going to be taking subscriber pictures from there and rotating yeah. them on the banner uh, probably weekly. So that'll be pretty fun. Yeah, so if you guys have got any pictures of boards that you want to share or might want us to consider for the banner, uh, please get them posted into Purple Chat. And Brian and I will have a look each week and we'll post one of the pictures up uh, as the banner. Um, and we'll pick it together. So, uh, yeah, get your pictures up, guys. We want to see your boards because it's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be freaking awesome. So looking forward to that. Um, next 24 hour stream still still planned still planning we're uh, we're waiting on media assets still but things have been going pretty well so uh, we're we're on track to still do that in the uh, the near future then other than that we have two build streams this week like I mentioned earlier I'm going to be building the TGR 910 tomorrow Friday on stream probably around 5 or 6 p.m. Pacific time is usually where I like to start them try to get it in before Nathan goes live so I can just kind of lead into him that'd be cool and then nice. uh, I believe you have one as well, Jay. Yeah, I'll be building the uh, the Sirius that I showed earlier on. Uh, I do need to decide whether I'm going to use my uh, carbon fiber plate or whether I'm going to use the uh, the POM plate that's included. I will build both eventually, um, but uh, I'll only be building one on Sunday. But I'm probably going to go with the POM plate, I think. Um, what switch is... still do an old POM build. Are you going to do this? Uh, the cream? TBC. I, I, I've got a few linears. I might put inks in. might put inks in. Now I've got some more coming. I, I was saving my inks for the unicorn, which is uh, should be shipping today actually. Um, but now I've got some more coming in. I've, I don't need to save them, so I'm probably going to put inks in. I think. Inks, okay. I think at some point, before well, I guess if you don't get done with it before you come to Seattle, you should try the creams in the all palm series because I really want to get your thoughts on that because that's like my okay. my current like favorite of everything right now. Right, okay. I only have one build with creams in, which is my uh, Noxery 268 AG, but that's at work, so I don't really want to bring it home to desolder it and take the switches out of it. I don't have any more creams, so that might have to wait until uh, to I see yours, Brian. Either that or I just buy more creams, I guess. That's the other option. No, that's that's way too difficult. We'll you can't do that. <laughs> it's, just not, it's not a thing. <sighs> All right, so that is that. Now we can roll into our relatively small news doc, but there are a few really interesting things going on this week. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of interesting things, there's the link for our first topic. Do you want to take us through this one, Brian? Yeah, actually, right before we start this, um, I just realized that we also don't have chat on the news viewer thing. And if I add it, it's not going to be transparent. So it's actually yeah, going to take up. Yeah. Oh, no, it's actually working on the news viewer. Whoa. Oh, it's there. Okay. Uh, so, guys, what we've learned here is that this was Brian all along. Okay, hold on. <laughs> First off, you're wrong. <laughs> Second, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Third, this is the interest check for the half leaf. Sorry, not half leaf. Half feather, seventy five percent keyboard, yeah. which uh, I thought was a pretty interesting name for a relatively interesting keyboard. So, once you sure. uh, once you run us through a few of the specs, while we take a look at some of these beauty shots. Uh, yeah, so okay, so this uh, is a fully anodized aluminium case, very similar to what we've seen before, a uh, six degree angle. It does have a couple of options in terms of plate. You can go for an anodized aluminium one, or you can have a multicolor gradient PVD brass option, uh, which is kind of like a, a bit like an oil slicky type effect across the uh, the PVD finish. Um, in terms of the PCB, it's running through the C3 firmware, so this isn't uh, a QMK compatible PCB. It's running through C3. Those are the guys behind the C3 PCBs and the Tangerine switches as well. Um, so that's that's kind of like a, a fairly new bit of software to the community. So uh, there's, there's a lot of interest in that at the minute. Uh, the mounting method, uh, burger mount with O-rings. So this is very similar to boards like the uh, the Brutal 60, which you might have seen on my build streams quite recently, uh, which is a simplified version of the gasket mount as the, uh, the LP suggests. 
Um, and then in terms of other parts as well, there is a three millimeter and a 3.5 millimeter option for silicone dampener. Um, now, originally the 3.5 millimeter was between the plate and the PCB, and then there was a three millimeter one underneath the PCB, but the one between the plate and PCB has now been removed. Uh, and the price range is looking around $300 to $220. Um, Brian, what do you think of the layout? I think the layout is really fun. Um, okay. Not ideal for me, but then again, I tend to veer away from 75% to begin with. But it's kind of cute. It's kind of different. It's fun. I like his um, his little logos for the uh, the half feather, and especially, I'm trying to find a good picture of the one underneath, sorry. Um, I guess this is the only one. This kind of uh, exploded render, I guess you could say. I think the uh, the actual like feather weight thing is, is really, really nice. I like that quite a bit. Uh, burger mount, haven't used it yet, but seems fine. It's effectively just kind of top mount with O-rings, and I mean, how could how could that really be bad when top mount is like the most popular thing in the world for keyboards? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's not it, bad mount. I, I kind of dig the little the oil slick kind of look, because we, um, I don't know if it's the same procedure that's on the base of the Kepler that I have, but uh, there's something very similar to that as well. It's effectively like an oil slick look, like you had mentioned. And he has a couple yeah. of pictures of that here, and it looks pretty awesome. I like that quite a bit. Um, yeah. I worry if he's going to be able to hit the price he's estimating. Because um, usually boards that are this level of intricate, not saying this is super intricate, but this level of intricate tend to go 350 to 4 um, sometimes even higher. So, I mean, if, if you can actually keep a 220 to $300 range, I think that's going to be a pretty big win and they'll probably sell yeah. a fair amount of units. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. And I mean, the, there are some things they've done to try and keep the machining costs down. If you look at the pictures of the, uh, the board where you can see there's no caps and just a plate in the board, um, you can see that they've done things like for the wing keyless blockers on the right-hand side, they haven't joined that up across the top of the arrow keys. They've kind of left that open. Uh, little things like that, little details like that can make a massive difference to the cost in terms of the actual production of boards in CNC and stuff like that as well. It's, it's just two rounded corners instead of having to mill out a whole area as well and keep a keep a, uh, a bar in the middle so there's little things like that that i noticed all throughout the board to try and keep the costs down so i think it, it's an ambitious price but if they can get to that price point this looks quite interesting to be honest the way that they've got that um uh half uh half logo on the bottom with where in the exploded view, I've lost the picture. I'm trying to scroll back to find it myself. Um, yeah, the way they've got that half uh, feather logo there is, uh, is is just really really nice. I like how that integrates into the base. I mean, that's really complex. That's adding more complexity into the machining. Yeah. Um, but if that comes off nicely, then that that is really nicely done. I really like it. Yeah, that's that's absolutely beautiful. I think that's quite literally a, a home run for me in terms of a, kind of an accent design. I'd struggle yeah. to call it a weight because it's pretty small. It is going to add weight, of course, but it's not exactly going to be... It's an accent piece, isn't it's, it? It's, let's, it's let's be honest. about as much of an accent piece as it is a weight, if not uh, more so. So I'm not going to... Yeah. I'm, I'm not really going to call that a weight, but I do think the board is, <laughs> is pretty nice. Um, Starstone in chat does say the USB mini and the C3 firmware kills this for me. And I feel like a lot of people are probably going to have a very similar opinion. Um, yeah. QMK is kind of like the base right now. It is like the benchmark for, for programming keyboards right now. Um, a lot of PCBs yeah. run it. It's become pretty darn easy to use, and it does have kind of like a gateway into uh, VIA. Which is a little bit less common right now, but uh, you know, it's that kind of programmer is the future in our community. You want you want a key to do something, you point and click it, and you tell it exactly what you want to do. There's no coding or anything um, from the consumer side. So I think that uh, you know, having a non QMK PCB is probably not a good idea, if I do say so myself. And I really I don't see why anyone would use um, USB Mini anymore. Honestly, unless there's like a, a, some kind of rationale behind it, but I think USB C has just been so common, and um, in our community lately, and it's there's not really a reason not to use it. I feel like. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I think USB C is a bit of a miss. Uh, most people are moving to USB C cables, using moving away from USB Mini. I think that that is a bit of a miss. Um, in terms of the C three software, I think you, you're probably right in the fact that it's not QMK compatible. It will 
make it a bit of a hit. Um, the biggest challenge with the C3 software is that there's been no English version previously, so it's all in, uh, I think, I'm not sure if it's Chinese or Korean or whatever language it's in, but it's not in English, which means that a lot of the Western community do struggle to use it and all of that kind of thing as well. So it is interesting that it does say right at the top of the interest check that there is going to be an English version of this, um, but it's still being translated at the moment and it will take some time. So I'd like to hope that that's ready prior to this board actually shipping. Uh, I think that might be something that does kill it if it doesn't you know if it's not ready before the board ships that's that's kind of a big miss really for me is that one um i i don't see how hard it would be to to make the pcb support qmk instead i think that's probably an easier option um but uh yeah we'll, we'll see how that goes we'll see how that goes that might be a, a, an interesting factor in the price as well to be honest it might be why the price is so low if they're using something that's uh, that's native to to where they're from yeah, know. it's very possible. One thing I do appreciate is, even though this is an interest check, he does have prototypes made already. Uh, which yeah, is pretty cool. The white one looks mint. The white one looks amazing. I, I think really, they look. Really... Yeah, I think they look gorgeous. Um, and this would be a group I'd actually consider joining, just based on uh, aesthetics alone. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how usable the layout is for me, but it, it does support ISO, which is good. Um, I, I like that. I'm not sure I like the F row. I think the, having the different size blockers, there's three different size blockers across the top of the board. I'm not quite sure I like that. Um, but I think the uh, the arrow cluster and the four keys in the top right-hand corner are quite nice, and the little uh, logo on there as well. I think that's quite nice. I quite like that. I think it's just the F row. I'd almost be tempted to just take the F row off this board and just kind of shrink it down without the F row. Um, mm. But that's, uh, that's a personal... Thing anyway rather than anything else yeah yep fair enough so there you go that's the half feather make sure you uh tune into this interest check if it's more your thing we can hit this up again once it actually comes to the group by phase this is pretty new though so bam let's move over to another interesting looking board this is an interest check for the av uh otherwise known as the avenue I, mm. I love I love this subtitle by the way a fifty percent ortholinear battle station. So when you hear the term <laughs> battle station, Jay, what comes to mind? Hyper Seven instantly. The Hyper Seven board is something, what comes to mind. Something that's just Huge. immense. Yeah. It's imposing. It's a command center. It takes up way more space than you probably need it to, and it has way more functionality than you probably need it to. That's what I think yep. of when I think of a battle station. Yeah, maybe it has a screen. You know, maybe it has, uh, you know, a cup holder. Maybe it has whatever, whatever. Like, it walks your dog. Who knows? But, like, <laughs> it's when I hear that term, I, I expect something to live up to that. And though I do like this keyboard project a lot, I, I struggle to see it as a battle station. I don't know. I kind of get it. I kind of, if you look at a lot of battle station boards, they do have that kind of angled back plate. So you, you, you kind of have the angled piece at the back and they've kind of gone for that whole look and feel. I get it. I see it. Um, I, I do agree that you can't call something so small a battle station unless you call it the battle station France or something like that. Um, but I do think the board looks great. It looks cute. I like that angled back bit. I'm a bit of a sucker for, uh, for boards. I've got a macro column on them as well. And I'm, you know, uh, you know, uh, seeing lots of opportunity with this. Um, I think one of the strongest problems with this for me is the fact that it's ortho. I really wish this wasn't ortho because if it wasn't, I would be all over it. I would be once in one right now. But I'm not very good with ortho layouts. Um, yeah, I think I think I prefer it if it was if it wasn't ortho. But I do really like the look of the board. Yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. Interest check is really well laid out. He has, uh, you know, kind of his inspiration down here with the uh, G eighty nine zero zero nine H A U board there, as well as the Yamaha RM eight hundred four. He so he kind of he obviously likes this kind of uh, extended back piece that comes up a little bit. Um, he says they display their massive stature proudly. I don't know how massive this fifty percent ortholinear board is going to be, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, it is it is what it is. So a couple things to note here is he's been playing around with a few different things, and he was considering having an e-ink display somewhere, uh, I assume, on this kind of top part, which I think would be pretty interesting. It would, um, yeah. The PCB is USB-C, which is nice. Um, he is planning on having a variant with a rotary encoder up here in the top left. I think he actually has a picture of it um, 
somewhere down here, if I remember. There it's right, go. right, right at the bottom. Yeah, yep. So here would be the top with the rotary encoder. So potentially two or even three different top versions here, based on whether there's going to be a rotary encoder, whether no rotary encoder, whether there's going to be an e-ink display. He might have multiple iterations there, which is kind of cool. Um, he does have a variety of colors. Um, so he's got uh, this is kind of interesting. So he has a variety of finishes too. So he's doing uh, potentially a polycarbonate version, um, maybe an amber polycarbonate version, which I think would look really, really nice. Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be uh, a few anodized aluminum versions. So a purple, dark gray, red, black, and silver. And he's going to have multiple powder coated options too, which is kind of interesting. White retro refrigerator teal and banana yellow, and potentially banana a yellow. full brass burnt version as well. So this guy's this guy's pushing a lot of different skews here. I feel like. Yeah, yeah. I think that I, I think he may need to slim that down just a little bit, depending on what the interest check points him towards. But uh, just looking down, and uh, thank you, uh, George, for pointing this out, but he does say that he wants to add a standard 40% plate option, which puts me right back into contention for buying this, um, as well as uh, all of the other things that you talked through there as well, plus potentially the op option of adding Bluetooth support in too. Um, I mean, there's plenty of space for battery in there in the angle part, so uh, you know that, that could be really interesting if you can add Bluetooth to it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Plate options really standard here, either steel or PVD brass, 1.5 millimeters, pretty normal stuff there. Um, but it's it, it looks pretty cool. I, I don't like using the battle station tag there, but I do think it is a nice looking board. I, I worry, I don't know how many group buys this gentleman has ran in the past, but I feel like there's so many skews here between colors, top variants, and other things that... Uh, it would be hard for any one or two people to, to manage this, I feel like, on a, a slightly larger scale. Unless he looks oh, sure. pretty yeah. hard. Yeah, I think so. I think he just needs to make some clear choices with what the options are and things like that. And uh, shout out to Pokemon Kid as well, who's uh, one of my fellow UK patrons, saying have uh, one of these either side of a Hyper 7 and then it does become a super battle station. Um, yeah, that could be interesting. That could be interesting. Maybe maybe one day I'll come to meet up and I'll bring Hyper 7 and one of these along. Uh, you just have... You just have uh, a bunch of these around it, just like four up top and then one on each side. Ex <coughs> yeah, extend or, the Hyper 7 with a bunch of avenues. Or I have the Hyper 7 and turn that into kind of like a, an entryway to a circular desk and just have the Hyper 7 uh, in one area, the chair in the middle, and then I can just spin on a chair and just have one of these at every position. Oh, perfect, yeah. See, that's what a battle station is. If you have to relocate yeah. yourself... Like to relocate yourself just to hit like a button that you need to press like across <laughs> your room, you're you're in a battle station now. <laughs> um, also, shout outs to uh, Polyzoo and Dixie Mech for the uh, your subs. Thank you very much. Cheers to you. Oh, thanks guys. Yeah, we appreciate that. Yeah, so pretty pretty fun looking project. Pretty fun. This yeah, it's nice. I'd, it's nice. Yeah, with with a, with a more normal. 60% uh, layout, I, or not 60, sorry, no, more normal 40 slash 50% layout, I would be tempted to buy this as well. Um, yeah, yeah. I think if, it, if it does a proper stagger to 40% with 6.25U space bar option, I will buy this, I think. Yeah. It's a fun looking project. It really is. Yeah. Um, it is top mount, by the way. I don't know if we mentioned that. Uh, I think we did. I think we did. Oh, okay. Uh, so the estimated price here is going to be low 200s for a very basic configuration. I would imagine that would uh, omit your brass option. Probably that'd probably be the steel plate version, uh, maybe without a rotary encoder, maybe without an e-ink mm. display, something like that. So it'll probably start around low 200s is uh, the kind of estimation at the moment. But pretty fun. Yeah. Pretty fun. How, how high do you think the, uh, the full price for the fully loaded brass e-ink... Um, Rotary encoder version might be. What, what do you think the upper limit is for for price on a board like this? Uh, I'm gonna guess the e ink display isn't gonna work out. I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna guess right now that that's not gonna be an actual final option. It'd be really fun to see, sure. but I feel like that's just gonna be too expensive potentially. But uh, I, with the brass options, and if they pull off an e ink display, I feel like probably around three fifty, maybe for another yeah. one. I think that's gonna be my ballpark here. Probably around yeah, there. I think that's probably fair. Yeah, and, and, I think, and, and I think... you know what? It would probably be fair. It'd probably be a fair price for it. Sure. I think if it if it got any higher than sort of four twenty, four thirty, that's where you'd start to have problems. Even if you took the top end board, I think that's where it starts to be uh, a too high a price. But I think I agree with your your assessment there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. 
Cool. All right. So speaking of awesome subcompact boards, our next one up is uh, pretty intriguing as well. So this is an interest check for the Hawking 48, a gasket-mounted mm. 40% ortho, which I thought was pretty interesting. So yeah, it's something a little bit of a new take on this kind of board, right? It's, yeah, exactly. So like I've mentioned on previous shows, the the kind of super compact sub 60% kind of niche part of the hobby hasn't really seen a ton of really high-end offerings. Um, we've been seeing a little bit more of them lately, and I think this is really kind of pushing it forward because this is a pretty nice-looking product, and it has a lot of features that you'd find on nicer, higher-end boards that you can't usually find on um, boards this small. So pretty interesting stuff here. So I'm just going to start us off. 5.5-degree angle on this. It is using an isolation mount, full isolation mount, effectively, um, which uses sorbethane as the dampening material, which I thought was kind of interesting. So people have been kind of using that yeah. to uh, put under their PCBs and their cases for a while now. A lot of people like it. It's kind of expensive, but it's really effective. So I think mm. it should uh, it should be able to be pulled off pretty well here. Um, similar to the Kepler, there's actually only four screws for this uh, case together as well. So just four corner screws. That way you don't get anything else interfering with the plate or PCB. Um, so let me find the picture here. Sorry, guys. But there's going to be... Um, as you can see here, one layer of sorbethane above the plate and one layer below the plate. There is notches on each corner of the plate and the gaskets to make sure that the screws don't actually touch them. So this is just going to be effectively pressure mounted, isolation yeah. mounted between the, the uh, two layers of sorbethane, which is pretty awesome. Um, they, they are claiming they are going to do a flex slot PCB, which will feature uh, electrostatic discharge protection, USB-C, and uh, an STM32 running QMK and VIA, which is interesting. It wasn't even a possible nice. VIA. Like, he's just claiming it's going to run VIA, which is pretty awesome. So apparently they already have that uh, going on. Um, yeah, what do you yeah. think about this, Jay? So, I, I think it's really interesting. So first and foremost, you know, love the mount type. You know, I've, I've used it in the J01. It's been in the Kepler. You know, I think that's great. Uh, interesting choice in the Sorbethane. So Sorbethane in thick thicknesses so when you're talking centimeter or greater is quite compressible um at one sixteenth of an inch that's quite a thin uh, sheet so I'm, I'm wondering how much additional flexibility and bounce that'll give to it um, i'm interested to try that out uh, i think obviously if the, the pcb is going to have the flex cuts added into it that's going to make a big difference to that as well so i'm really interested to see that uh, again big ticks for via and Q, qmk i think that's uh, you know via is a great opportunity to, to put on a board like this um because i i'd find that if i was using a straight 40 percent author board and i probably wouldn't use an author board but if i was i probably want to remap stuff on the flyers i was learning how to use the board so having you know that kind of instant update support there is uh, is a really good option um, the other thing I wanted to call out as well is I really like the color choices for this. So you've got the typical black and the space gray, but the one that really interests me is the nightingale blue. That color looks great in all of the shots and all of the renders here. I really, really like that color. It's got a really dark, lovely blue, classy color. I really like that. Um, I think it's great. And the naming as well, calling it the Hawking is just, you know, a great, a great uh, tribute to... Uh, uh, to a great scientist, so yeah, I really like that as well. Yeah, and he kind of has the uh, kind of it seems like a black hole esque design for the weight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really nice. I, I feel like this board is like kind of simple, but kind of complex, but it's executed really, really well. And this well, could, I think this I think you're right. I think you're right. What it does, is it looks like a really simple standard ortho board, but it hides a lot of that complexity, which is a really classy way of doing it. I think I really like it. So, yeah, good yeah. to see. Yeah, I, I don't even use ortho, but I want to get one of these. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'd say my, my, my big interest is around the uh, the gasket material choice for this. And I, w I would like to actually speak to the guy and, and understand why he's picked sorbethane instead of some of the more usual materials like cork and uh, different versions of nitrile rubber and things like that. Because they're, they're usually what you have to bear in mind is the compression ratio of when you're putting gaskets in boards. And the uh, the compression ratio of sorbethane is very, very different to anything that's traditionally used. So I'd be interested to talk to him about that. Uh, so if you ever watch this uh, and you want to reach out uh, Phoenix Start, then uh, please do. I'd, I'd love to talk to you about that. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye on this one. Um, it, it looks it looks pretty awesome, IMO. I like boards that are, like Jay said, very very elegant, very kind of deceptive in how complex they are. Um, you know, you can sit down to one of these and not really know what you're getting yourself into, but once you type on it, yeah. that isolation mount's really going to come through and it's going to be 
Probably pretty sublime, I imagine, with the uh, sort of theme. Good Absolutely. stuff. Yeah. So we'll be on the lookout for this one, boys. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Jumping into our next topic, then. Uh, this is something uh, a little bit different to that. This is back to a more standardized type layout. This is the Jupiter Seventy Five. Uh, so this is by Mu Studio, Mu Studio, um, and uh, it's a seventy-five percent keyboard. Do you want to run us through some specs for this one, Brian? Yeah, so I'm trying to find a breakout. Yeah, okay, here we go. So this is basically, like Jay said, a 75%. It is going to use uh, burger mount. The translation on here was a little strange. Uh, they called it top mount with apron. I'm assuming that meant top mount with O-rings. Um, yeah, judging by so. the pictures here, it looks like there are O-rings on uh, each side, but it's effectively top mount with O-rings, a.k.a. burger mount. Um, which is pretty cool. A lot of people have been enjoying that lately because it's uh, pretty inexpensive to put off or to, to actually apply. And, uh, you, know, mm -hmm. you know, the O-rings, not terribly expensive to begin with either. So pretty awesome there. 5.5 degree angle. It is going to use a dual mode Bluetooth PCB. So you can do, you know, Bluetooth or you can do wired, whichever your preference is. I like seeing that. Um, I wish Bluetooth PCBs were a little bit more of a thing in our community. But mm -hmm. uh, I feel like we're slowly kind of getting there a little bit. Um the case is aluminum, and it's going to use brass and steel weights, but I really don't like that they call them weights, kind of like the previous boards we've talked about today, um, because they, it's really not a weight, guys. Like, it's, it's, it's an accent. It's this thing on the bottom. <laughs> this piece, I believe, is, is brass, and this kind of inner piece is steel or something like that. Like, it's, it's so minor that it's not going to add that much weight. It's not going to really affect the total weight of the board. So I, I, I wish people would just all start calling them what they are, accent pieces. It's just way yeah, easier, sure. less, less headache for all of us. Um, there is a polycarbonate version being considered, and the colors are still undecided. So how do you feel about the look of this board, Jay? Uh, first and foremost, I want to say that the way that they've done the top blockers on this board is probably the best way of doing 75% blockers and having that, uh, that row across the top. Um, in my view, uh, it's very similar to the Wraith board that we talked about a few weeks ago, uh, and I think we talked about another one, I can't remember the name of it, that had this kind of layout, um, but that top row is, is quite possibly the the best option, for, in my opinion, for a top row on a 75% board. I don't think there's anything else you could do that would be as nice. It stops the the, uh, the alignment between the F row and the num row. Um, it breaks it up. It's got blockers that are even size. It's pretty much symmetrical. I know there's a one new key on one side and two one new keys on the other side, but it's pretty much close to being symmetrical. I like that a lot. Um, and who doesn't love a, uh, a block between the, uh, the on, on the spacebar row? Who doesn't love that to break up your uh, your function keys and your arrow keys? Yeah, I think I think the layout is great on this. Uh, lots of support as well. Multiple different options for your bottom row. ISO support if you want that kind of thing, uh, which obviously I would. Um, yeah, I think this is you know it looks like a great little layout. I think it'd be fantastic if they get the Bluetooth working well. Yeah, most definitely. So there is no price listed yet for it, um, and from what I can see, no physical prototype either. He does say at the bottom that a proofing product is coming out. I assume he means that that's a, uh, a prototype, so to prove, to prove the design and prove the concept. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see this. The, the interesting thing for me is on Bluetooth. is I, I, I use my iPad as a pretty much daily commuter device, and I work on the train and things like that. And I use my TMO50 at the minute as a, as a miniature uh, board for traveling with. Um, my one big problem with that is that it doesn't offer Bluetooth support. And that was why I bought the TR60, but... I don't like that board, so I'm not going to use it. So uh, I am missing a really, really good Bluetooth option for a, for a travel board. And Most of us are. Most of yeah, us are. Um, it, it, it is kind of frustrating. I wouldn't call this a travel board, at least not for no. me. I think uh, you know, a, a, an all metal or basically all metal. Um, you know, seventy five percent is probably a little bit too large for me to want to travel around with it. But sure. Um, I, I, I think being able to have the option for Bluetooth is significantly better than not having the option for Bluetooth. Yeah, uh, provided and, and that they point. both work functionally as they should. Yeah, and that, that's my point. I'm, I, whilst I probably wouldn't use this as a travel board, as you say, and, I mean, the polycarbonate version might not be too bad because it won't that's be true. too heavy. But um, 
what I'm hoping is that this will, you know, try and kickstart a bit more Bluetooth interest because it is something that the community is missing, and I would really, really like to see more of it. Um, and if anyone wants to make a TMO50 Bluetooth PCB, well, I'll buy ten. <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it, it's it's something that we desperately need more of in the community. I'd like to see more Bluetooth. Yeah, we are we are desperately missing like even just a sixty percent Bluetooth PCB on the market. Like there have been a couple and they haven't done very well and they're like really hard to find now. <laughs> they're not in stock yeah. anywhere. So And the, the the only one I've got, the only Bluetooth sixty percent PCB I've got is the one for the TR sixty and that actually uses standard uh Duracell batteries, so you put double A batteries into it and um that doesn't work well if I'm honest. It it's not great. It's not a brilliant solution. What we need is something that can support a proper, um, you know, lithium-ion battery or something like that that you can just embed in the bottom of the case. That, that's what we really need, and something that's easy to use, something that you don't have to solder directly, something that's chargeable via USB port as well. You know, all of those kind of things. We need something like that. In, in yeah, the there's like no excuse for it really either. It. Like we could do this, people just aren't. Yeah, I think there've been a couple of boards um, more in the forty percent size. I know that uh, pilots just mentioned the Chicory Forty had Bluetooth, but a good sixty be nice, or you know, yeah. something a little bit bigger than a forty. Something just, that's actually I using one of the only universal standards in our community, which is a sixty percent PCB. Yeah, I think there's just a little bit of a gap there at the minute, and I'd like to see something fill it. Yeah, perhaps we need a. a, a do you know? Do you know? Do you, <laughs> do you know what would be, be really nice, actually, if I could use this Sirius, the Palm Sirius, as a travel board with a Bluetooth PCB? That would be amazing. In a heartbeat, I'd use mine too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Bluetooth PCB. Someone, guys. someone, get some work on them. this, please. Please take all of our buddies. <laughs> Um, yeah. Also, shout out to Talisman who gifted a tier one sub to Lube Helios. That's their 150th gift sub of the channel. Thank you so much, Talisman. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Tyson you, also gifting a tier one to Neglin, and it's their first gift sub of the channel. So shout out to you as well. Thank you so much for your first gift sub. Oh, thank you, dude. Big hearts, guys. Big hearts. All right. So that's uh, that's that. That's the Jupiter 75. percent I feel like I feel like the names of the keyboards we looked at today so far have been pretty good. Yeah, really spacey. The yeah, Avenue, I like, I like I that. Like Hawking, I like that. Jupiter, I'm all about it. Yeah, it's good. It's all good. Right. So, guys, if you're looking forward to uh, some top mount with apron, maybe uh, keep an eye on the Jupiter 75. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, why don't you tell us about our next board, Jay? The yeah, so the... Yeah, the next one that's uh, up is from uh, O oh, Keycaps, which is a store run by Dan. Uh, so Dan reached out to me early on and let me know that, uh, or last week actually, just after the show had started last week, so we didn't get to uh, to have it within the show last week and include it within our document. But uh, effectively, what they've launched uh, is a dactyl manuform uh, built to order keyboard service. So this is the first of its type in the community. Previously, these have only been built by you know the uh, the sincerest of hobbyists, people who really want to challenge themselves to a difficult soldering job. Uh, and uh, waiting for a, a pretty lengthy 3D printed process. Uh, but these ones come pre-built, um, so there's a whole team based behind these. I think uh, a couple of them might actually be watching as well. I'm sure Slippery Pete's been watching, but he's the builder. Uh, Crystal Hand is the case printer. Deft Rocker lubes all the switches as well for these builds, and uh, then Dan runs the store from what I understand. But effectively, this is a way to get yourself something like a dactyl manuform if you want to try something really obscure in the community. Try one of these uh, you know, unique layouts. It's kind of concave effect, um, designed for SA keycaps, I think, originally. So you know, it, it's an opportunity to try one of these boards and, and, and have one all pre-built for you so it's not something that existed before in the community have you ever tried one of these boards um i haven't but this is kind of at least loosely based around the kind of same layout as a kinesis advantage too sure um, yeah. which i have used and it's nice it's hard for someone like me to get used to it because i don't type properly but i do appreciate the ergonomic factor the dactyl has been a layout um you know in our community for many 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 years now and like you had mentioned before mm. hobbyists used to do this all the time this is nothing necessarily new per se in terms of the layout but i definitely respect that it is very very cool if you're into this sort of thing so you mentioned lube switches which i thought was kind of interesting is that actually an option here yeah yeah so you can have your switches lubed for these uh these builds if that's what you want to do there is a guide right at the bottom on the uh on the right hand side for uh how they'll do the switch tier list and uh, and what you can have um but yeah they'll they'll lube the switches for you if you want 
Uh, you can provide your own switches as well. That's uh, that's uh, that's also an option. But yeah, they, they will do the switches for you if you like. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the, I, I mean, the idea is they build it completely for you. So that way, when you get the product, it's ready to go, um, which yeah. is pretty cool. I've posted the link in chat, guys, if anyone's interested in how that tier system breaks down for the switches and the lube services. But uh, uh, yeah, it does affect the price. It does increase the price a little bit if you want the uh, the switches lubed on anything like that. But uh, do take a look if you're interested in this as well. And uh, the other thing I want to uh, uh, to just shout out as well is that the, the runner is... Uh, uh, is in chat and he posted a second ago I've lost it now uh, but he did say that there was a, a, a discount of $10 for 24 hours if anyone wants to use the, to the code top clacky um, um, he'll be offering nice. a $10 discount that's nice thank you dude Very appreciate cool. that yeah thank you so much man that is awesome um, also shout out to MS Evil Genius thank you very much and Lump of Unworth is gifting a tier 1 sub to uh, you Melon so thank you very much guys been a while, Lump. Glad to see you around, man. Um, so what do we think about the price here? So starting at $340, or I guess if you provide your own switches, sorry, it's $334. Um, yeah. What, what, think, do we, uh, what do we feel about the price overall? Well, I think when I was speaking to, uh, to Dan just before the show, he mentioned that the, uh, the the cheapest price is $319, and it does go up to $440 depending on your choices. So I'm not sure which breakdown it is, but there's different options for the boards as well. So there's dactyl menu form and all of that kind of thing. There are different layouts, and there's uh, there's options there. Some might be a little bit cheaper. Um, rental car and light cycle, for example. But in terms of the price, it is quite expensive but this is a very unique type of keyboard. Um, it's 3D printed, it's handmade, it's gonna have to have a lot of hand sanding and it's a hand wired board effectively that's built. So it, it's not something that's just, you know, slap a PCB on it and solder a few switches in place. This is actually hand wiring a board and that's where a lot of the cost comes from with this. So it's one of those things. Um, you're going to have to pay for the labor effectively. That, yeah. that's, that's what you're talking about here. That, that's where the cost is driven from. It's a labor-intensive build, and they're taking that labor away from you and providing it a fully built, ready to go, ready for you to use. Um, I mean, for, for one, I probably wouldn't want to do another one. I've done one of these on stream a long time ago. I probably wouldn't want to do another one because it is really fiddly. It's difficult. It, it's, uh, it's something that a lot of builders in the community would probably shy away from, to be honest, um, unless they've done a yeah. lot of uh, hand wire builds. Yeah, it used to be very popular. Um, you know, almost all sub sixty percent boards used to be hand wired. Um, for sure, yeah. And, and now you know we see PCBs are so common, but we often take it for granted. You used to, if you wanted this something this custom, you had to hand wire it. Um, if you yeah. wanted even like a plonk in the past, like you would usually have to hand wire it years ago. But uh, you know, now we're seeing that PCBs more abundant. But this is something very very unique. There isn't a whole lot else like it. So uh, you pretty much have to hand wire to get this kind of level of uh, ergonomics with all these curves and stuff. But it is kind of a nightmare to hand wire, honestly. Um, and even, yeah, if, even sure. if you're good at it, it still takes a little while. I remember early on Top Tax Life Cycle, we actually had a fun little build race between three different uh, people hand wiring a build. And they all, they're all they all doing like the same build with like the same stuff. And it was just a race. We gave them away. It was fun. It was a good time. But it takes a <laughs> while. Like It was a long stream. Oh, sure. It was not yeah. short. So yeah, definitely yeah, paying for the labor here. It's not easy. Yeah, I agree. Um, I assume the, uh, the 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 bring your own switch option. You'll be sending the switches to them, and then they'll build it with the switches you provide um, as well. That's just one of the thing I want to call out because I think it was being talked about in chat a second ago. Um, but yeah, you've not got another choice for this board. You can't really put a PCB in it because of the way it's shaped and curved. So um, the only way you've got to doing it is using the one new postage boards which are uh, effectively a mini PCB per switch and then joining all of those together which again you, you may as well be hand wired at that, at that point well. yeah 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 cool so yeah make sure to uh, make sure if you're planning on buying you maybe check out the, the discount code let's put it in there what was that again I have to, I have to <laughs> scroll up to look sorry top clacky uh, top clacky yeah one yeah, word top. <laughs> very nice that'll get you a $10 discount code for that so thanks for doing that man we appreciate that all right, so cool. let's, uh, let's move on to our next topic, which is an interest check for the J80, which was formerly known as the Jur A06. So this mm. board uh, this board first ran a while ago, and uh, it was kind of claim to fame was its kind of vintage look, but uh, they decided to go with a top mount without a plate, which was pretty intriguing for the time. And it still is, actually. We don't see a whole lot of plateless builds these days, especially uh, being top mount. So 
that was kind of uh, what this board was all about. And apparently it was popular enough to warrant a round two, Jay. Yeah, yeah. So the, the interesting thing about the, uh, the day, I know you said it was a while ago. It was literally a year to the day that they opened the interest check last year and the interest check this year. Um, so it, it's been one year since the group by last round. So it is interesting that this board's come back. Um, in terms of the mount method, as you say, it hasn't changed. The same mount method is in place, but there are a couple of little differences uh, between last year's board and this year's board. Uh, the first thing to call out is that the names changed. It's not the J806 anymore. It's now the J80. Uh, just so they're changing the naming convention a little bit, but it is from the same manufacturers. Um, in terms of the colours, there's only three available this time. Uh, there is black, uh, an e white, and then a grey as well, uh, or a dark grey colour. Um, due to cost as well, they do say that the electrophoresis white will be slightly more expensive. Now, the interesting thing about the e-white here is it's not the same e-white as what we've seen on the Germany. So I bought, I built that on stream a couple of uh, months ago. Um, they've actually changed the color of the e-white here to look more retro. So they've kind of made it a more beigey white. So it looks more like microarch uh, oxidization somehow um, than it does the standard e-white. So that's quite interesting, and it's quite. Uh, in keeping with the theme uh, of that whole vintage look and feel. And then the final thing that they've changed as well is instead of having the option for three keys in line with your F-Row on the right-hand side of the board, there's another little add-on, isn't there, Brian? Yeah, so you could either choose to have uh, three keys like you normally would in a TKL format here in the top right, just like you can see in this picture, or you can actually put this little cover over it to give you a little bit more of a vintage vibe if you want your indicator LEDs to be a little bit more retro, I guess you could say. I do like the way this looks quite mm. a bit. You can put LEDs under there, no big deal. It's classy. I like it. I like classy. Yeah, it looks great. I don't know if that was a feature on the original one or not, but man, I love that. It's so, so good. I like the sticker. Yeah, the sticker's cool. Um, so the other thing to call out as well is that last year there were only 40 of these boards produced. Now, I didn't realize that it was so limited last year. I did try for a while to get hold of one because I missed the group buy and I really like the look and layout of this board. Um, so I'm glad to see that it's running again. I'm glad to see that they're going to have more opportunities for people to purchase them. I'm very, very tempted to get one. I'm hoping that the cost is slightly cheaper than last year. I think it was a little bit more expensive than a lot of people were expecting last year. So I hope that this uh, is slightly lower in, uh, in price. But I'm really looking forward to this, Brian. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, if the timing's right, I'm probably going to try to pick one up too. I really like uh, the look. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. And I feel like yeah, I I, I want to give the PCB Top Man a try. Because I haven't tried this yet. I know a former Top Clack co-host, Man of Interest, does have one of these. He bought one uh, during his time on Top, top Clack. And he, he did like it quite a bit. I think it's still one of his favorite boards, so... Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's used a lot of keyboards. He kind of knows what's up. So I imagine this board feels pretty cool. Yeah, I'm I'm dead excited to try this. Now, interestingly, I know last year when they ran this, they also ran a numpad that went alongside it. Um, I don't see that appearing this year. And I don't see anyone mentioning it in chat or anything either. So I'm not sure if that's running again or not. I would like to see the numpad back. If the numpad comes back, I'll buy both without a shadow of a doubt. I think it looks great. Um, so hopefully that's going to be there too. Yeah, so this one, uh, they actually do say that this group will oh, no longer it. provide JPAD or provide J80NCR color matching. Uh, so that so was the something um, they did in the previous run. They actually colored, color matched the, uh, the NCR colorway for uh, a little bit more of that vintage authenticity. But yeah, I, I believe, I'm guessing the JPAD is what uh, it was previously called before, so... Yeah, I think they called it the J20 previously. Um, but yeah, I assume that's the same thing, which is a shame because that was a really cool looking little macro pad as well. So I, I, I did like that, but okay. These pictures are great, by the way. Um, this board just looks incredible, if you ask me. And uh, these pictures definitely do it some justice. Yeah, yeah I, I do really like it. I'm definitely going to try and pick one of these up in the group by. Um, I, I just can't imagine not having one for any longer in my life. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, there you go. That's the interest check for the J80. Let's move on to some key sets. Starting um, with SA SNES. Interest check. Those of you guys may not know what SNES is. Maybe you're, you know, you've lived under a rock, or maybe you're too young. SNES is the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, which was uh, very near and dear to my heart because that was a, an entertainment mm. system, a console, gaming console that I grew up with. And uh, this this key set kind of aims to uh, to fill that. Fill that kind of uh, 
you know, nostalgia in our heart. So some of you might be wondering, wait a minute, didn't we just have a Super Nintendo key set not that long ago? Well, sort of. There was an interest check for uh, GMK SNES, which was up for a while, but uh, never really came to fruition. So I guess this gentleman here, or uh, or madam, I guess, decided to do a SA version. And there's a couple things I do want to point out in this, because there's, there's a few things I really like. First off, you can probably notice from this picture, Top Left Align Legends on SA Caps. Mm -hmm. So this is the more traditional Philco method of the SA Caps, and I like this a lot. I think it looks so much better. Really? Okay. I love it. Yeah, I think it looks really, really good. Um, also, <laughs> they're using uh, a different font than usual. So they're using the Helvetica Legends, which we don't normally see, which I thought was pretty yeah. cool. And they're, uh, they're claiming that's going to have a retro-modern aesthetic, which is pretty neat. Um, in terms of the profile choice, they're still in debate for that. So they're thinking of doing it the uh, sculpted way or a kind of mostly uniform way. The uh, sculpted will be 112343 in terms of top to bottom row. And the mostly mm -hmm. flat will be row 223333, three, 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 which is almost uniform. Yeah, and it's also the way that Philco tends to do their boards. Um, so, so usually you see these legends on that two, two, three, 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 three kind of uh, uh, layout, which is interesting. Um, I think also as well, there's plenty of color choices in here. I'm almost wondering if there's too many colors in this. And I, I get and appreciate that all of these are original colors from the uh, from the console, but I am wondering if there's just too many colors in this set for me. Um, I think it looks good in the render. I'm not. Uh, I'm not usually one for liking uh, uh, WSD clusters, but I think it really works on this set. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think I think there might just be too many colours. I'm not quite sure. I like the fact that there's two different purples on the F row, for example, and then um, multiple different keycaps and accent keys and all that kind of stuff. I think it just needs to maybe, maybe simplify down a little bit. Yeah, I I think it looks pretty good, though. And I feel like if they do keep the Helvetica text, the top left-aligned legends, um, this is possibly going to be a set that I get, even though I don't really care for SA. Um, particularly if they do the, the more uniform profile, I'm, I'm more into this, for sure. But mm, uh, sure. I, I like where this is going. Let's just say that. Um, yeah. I'm not 100% sure what the accents are supposed to be. I feel like, you know, we don't... I'm trying to figure out where on the Super yeah. Nintendo or the Super Nintendo controller where um, these accent colors are actually coming from. With that said, I am actually secretly a big sucker for WAS clusters, and I really, oh, really? wish, okay. I really, really wish more sets had novelty WAS clusters. Okay, see, I, I usually dislike it, but uh, on this particular one, I, qu I quite enjoy it. Yeah, if I design a set, I'm a sucker for that. I'll, I'll do it. I swear. I swear I'll do accent was. Cool. Okay. So I think it's one to watch out for. I'm definitely interested to see how it goes. I'm not sure it's quite there yet in terms of its look and feel, but I do like the idea behind it. Uh, like Brian, I was a big SNES fan growing up. I Yeah, it was that and the Mega Drive, which I think you called the Genesis in the States, right? The Mega Drive was the Genesis over there. Sega. Genesis. Sega. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, it was the Mega Drive over here in the EU. Mega Drive. Um, nice. The Mega Drive. Yeah, yeah. And then it had the Mega CD. Um, add on yeah. as well, which really Sega CD. Places. Yeah. I mean, Did, what, what about the Sega Saturn? Was that called something? Oh, that was called the Sega Saturn. Yeah, it was just yeah. Sega Saturn here as well. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting how the consoles had different names, but no, this, the the Super Nintendo was uh, was the SNES over here as well. I I do love the theme. That that console was kind of like half my childhood, so um, it is very near and dear to my heart. So I hope that uh, this does you know progress and. We see some some changes to that, and I'd like to see the kits as well. I know that's on the to-do list, but seeing how the kits are sculpted out and uh, what options they pick for each of the kits, that'd be good to see too. Yeah, so this is double shot ABS, and uh, you know, hopefully we can get some more renders of this soon. We get a kit breakdown. I think there's potential here. The potential is here. We just have to wait and see. But I do like that he's you know actually trying to pantone match uh, everything here and really trying to get the the true feel of the super nintendo entertainment system kind of over to this key set i appreciate a good theme especially one that i like yeah i guess one one thing that might happen um is the uh, so just a quick question actually the the philco legends that we've seen on sp caps before are they helvetica or are they not i'm looking at them and i can't tell i'm not actually sure i'm not exactly a, a genius when it comes to font 
maybe someone in chat can uh, can tell because us. Because I I, re I really like those um, Philco legends. In fact, I've got a couple of Philco sets, which are signature plastic sets. They are made by SP for yeah. Philco directly, um, and they they you tend to find a lot of them in grab bags and all that kind of stuff. So I'm I'm not sure if that is help better or not, but I think that that is, is is perfectly fine and adequate as a as a legend and it is nice to see something even though i don't mind the uh, standard is it gourmand i think um uh, sp legends which are centralized on the caps I, it is nice to see these uh, uh top left aligned ones yeah yep yep dixie these are most definitely uh real the philco sp sets have been around for a while now i don't think we've Long ever time, seen yeah. a custom set that has used the uh top left aligned helvetica but yeah, I... we've seen a couple. Oh, have we? Yeah, there was uh, there were some runs for KP Republic last year where they did uh, a kind of spin-off of Troubled Minds in the Philco font and uh, sculpts, which was the two two three 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 uh, layout. They did uh, uh, green, green and purple set. Yeah, with with the Helvetica Legends. Uh, with the Philco Legends, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, All right. I've got a load of the caps from a grab bag, so yeah, I, I remember that running. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so we'll have to we'll have to pay attention to this. I'm looking forward to seeing how this progresses. Still, very early interest check. He still has uh, pretty much everything under the to do list category, so we don't really have a whole lot of extra info now. But uh, keeping our keeping our eye out, at least I am. Yeah, yeah, I think it's one to watch and see how it progresses, and I'll be interested to see what it looks like when it actually gets into group buy. Yeah, cool. All right. So why don't you uh, talk a little bit about our next set, Jake? Because I know this is uh, something you're super into. <laughs> I wouldn't say super into, but it's something I do like, yeah. Um, so this is a new group by on Kona, again, for another SA keycap set, and maybe the age of SA that we're seeing. Uh, and this is 2020 Commando key set. So this has very different legends to what we've talked about previously. Um, it's not the standard Gourmand or Helvetica or anything like that. It's something that's custom made for the Commando key set. Now, this, I think, is the third or fourth run of uh, variations of Commando key set. There was originally uh, 23 Commando set in 23. 13, which is one of the first SA custom keycap sets. I do have a set of that somewhere. Um, and then there's been a couple of variations. There was uh, a 2018 one, which was kind of like uh, a white and grey version. And now it's back uh, in the Commando keycap set for 2020 with kind of more of a khaki look and feel to it. Um, so the base kit here is $165, gives you a lot of uh, functionality um, uh, traditionally that we see. So you've got your, your TKL, basically, a couple of text novelties such as deploy key and things like that for your return key. Um, you can have alpha colored or mod colored spacebar, um, and that's kind of it. Uh, the F keys do have some cool, unique uh, novelties on them as well, uh, and there's a couple of different options for the escape. And then anything else is split up into kits, so there's various uh, kits depending on what you need. You can start off with a numpad kit, which is basically a numpad, uh, very simple, but it does have some really unique novelties for your uh, um, uh, for your uh, keys for your for multiplication, subtraction, uh, addition, and division. Um, so those are quite interesting. Uh, so a little bit more unusual than what we usually see in a set, but very much within keeping of the theme. And then any other uh, key that you might need to complete your set is based up in a number of different upgrade kits. I think there's four upgrade kits, an FPS gamer kit, uh, a Mighty Cross kit, and a space bar kit, all of which had multiple different functionalities. There's a lot of different novelties in there um, uh, and a lot of different uh, compatibility as well. Um, so it is designed by Jill Jill32. So this is the same person who's been behind all of the, uh, the commando key sets as far as I understand it. Uh, Group by launched June the 1st. Um, so we missed it previously, but we've caught it now. Uh, ends on July the 1st and uh, should be fulfilled by the end of Q1 2020, which is why it's called a 2020 kind of key set. What's funny is uh, all these people in chat are, are saying, you know, they're, they're, they're hating on it. They're kind of bashing on it. I cannot do this one. Uh, it's heinous. LOL. Yikes. What are those? <laughs> no. And you know what's funny? I feel the same way, but think about it. This key set, this style, this kind of theme has sold enough that this is the basically the fourth run of this. Yeah. So this is obviously selling somewhere. I know. I know there are actually a lot of people uh, in Asia that are a big fan of this key set, which I oh, thought was sure, kind of, yeah. well, that, which I thought was kind of interesting as well. It may not be quite as popular over here in the West, but I mean, it's it, clearly they're selling units of this uh, of this set. So. 
Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, the font might not be to everyone's taste, but it is in keeping with the theme. It is that whole kind of military text look, and that's kind of the idea behind the set. You know, and a lot of people are patriotic about the the armed forces around the world, and you know, this kind of does fit that theme really, really well. Um, whether you like it or not is personal preference, but clearly, there's enough people out there that do like it. Um, if I remember rightly, the original one, Commander Twenty Three, only had the W A S and D in this font. I'm pretty sure that the rest of them are the standard um, uh, SP Gourmand Legend, and it's just the W A S and D that had this uh, military style font on them. But uh, I think it was the second round when when the full alpha set came to fruition. Yeah. So there you go, guys. If uh, this is your thing, then bam, there you go. $165 base kit. A little bit more expensive than I'd like at this level of compatibility, but signature plastics with all this, you know, kind of obscure legend that we don't normally see, obviously that's going to drive the price up quite a bit. So. Yeah, so... um, it is always worth bearing in mind as well that signature plastics don't just have the uh, the Philco um, and the uh, the standard Gourmand Legends. They do have quite a few different sets of uh, Legend options out there. Um, I do remember speaking to Melissa about it a couple of years ago, and I think they've got about 18 different different fonts that they can offer. Um, some of them are things like Space Cadet, which are, are, are owned by other people, but I'm, I'm, you know, there, there is a lot more options than people realise with SP. Um, so yeah, well worth, uh, well worth looking into if you're looking to run an SP set anytime soon. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Moving on, interest check for GMK White on Black Colverac kit. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this one, Jay? Uh, it's a White on Black uh, kit to support Colverac users. Got it. That's all we got to know. That's all there is to it. Pretty, pretty cut <laughs> pretty and dry, much. guys. If you're, uh, <laughs> you know, if you're one of the, I don't know, how many, how many people use Colverac? I feel like there's not very many in our community that do. But, yeah, uh, um, but if you are I, I, and you needed know. your GMK compatibility for this one particular set, then bam, here you go. Yeah, in fact, actually, do you know what? Whilst we're whilst we're on, I might actually look up because I'm pretty sure there was a Colvert kit in GMK Yuri. Um, I'm just going to see if the numbers are on uh, mass drop as to how many that sold. I'm sure, that had a, a, a Colvert kit. Let me have a look. See, let me see if I can just find that. Um, uh, 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 yeah, it sold 46 and it's Dvorak and Colmac. So it wasn't Colverac, it was Colmac, uh, but it sold 46 units. Um, and I, I do feel like, even though this is one of the most popular colorways with white and black, it's probably going to struggle a little bit. Um, but at the same time, I'm all for supporting minorities within the community, so uh, yeah. I'd like to see things like this run. And if it doesn't make it, then you know, it doesn't make it, but uh, it's good to see stuff like this tried. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. Um, I like I like how the, uh, the the OP of this post also just says any Colverac in his little uh, signature area here. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, so, I like that. So, well. so, so clearly he's one of the users that actually needs this, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, good good to see it. Got to support minorities where we can. Um, I, I'm not sure how well this will do, but I wish him the best of luck. I really do. Wait a minute, stepped Colmac backspace? Does yeah, Colmac so use the, a different backspace? Uh, yeah, it does. So it uses a stepped backspace. So it's basically the caps lock key, but flipped 180 degrees from brightly. If, if oh, so it's it, stepped yeah. the other way? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, I'm going from memory here, so I might be wrong on that, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's stepped. Let me see if why I can find would, a. Why would anyone need that? Why would you need it stepped the other way? I'm so confused. Uh, I'm sure it's stepped the other way. I, I need someone to way. find a picture of this for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone, someone just show, someone just see if we can find a picture of it being, um, being uh, done. I'm sure it's stepped the other way. Caps oh, lock so, equals so, backspace? Okay, so we're... Yeah, it's only put it on the caps lock key. Okay. okay uh, so it's a caps lock key with the backspace um, text on it. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Ah, uh, I I could have sworn it was stepped the other way. I could have sworn it was stepped the other way. Interesting. Man, I should really learn how to use non qwerty layouts, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the interesting thing about this, though, is that it kind of makes sense to put backspace on the caps lock key if you're using an alternative layout. Because I never use the caps lock key for caps lock. I don't know if you guys do who are watching. You know, tell us in chat if you do. Um, but I always use it for control. I don't have a keyboard that I own where it's not 
mapped to control, and I don't have caps on, mapped on the top there because yeah. I never really need it. Um, I don't know if that's common or if if that's just me, but I, I can't remember any time ever having control. Uh, sorry, caps lock is caps lock. Yeah, same. Um, I I use control there most of the time as well, so I mm. I, I don't I don't know. I the caps lock is not even ever really needed for anything. Like almost ever. Uh, Zen Xenotropic says I use caps at work at work a lot. Um, oh. You must have some very angry emails to send. <laughs> uh, very yeah, interesting interesting job. I guess I don't I don't yeah I don't know. How often do you need to just type in all caps? Very very like rarely, for, ex- how for extended you... periods of time. Apparently, exactly yeah. How often do you need to use backspace to correct what you've typed though? Pretty often, right? That happens a lot. It kind yeah. of makes sense to have have backspace there yeah i might i, might I, 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 I guess so yeah it is it is easier yeah. to reach i feel like that that'd, yeah, be, that'd be a rough learning curve though changing it to the complete other side of the board yeah i, I might I might, I might try changing it and uh just having it on uh repeated tap for backspace and on hold its control might try that uh, we might give that a try cobol programmer medical billing okay See, see Jay, Jay and I are just ignorant a lot of the times because we don't. Yeah. I I, I, don't. I I can't think of a scenario where you need that, but obviously, you know, you guys being in the fields that you're in, you you do know that you need it for that, which is yeah, interesting. But I mean, Very but like, how? Let's be real here, though. How often do you need caps lock on your first layer? Because it's pretty easy to just put it on, you know, function tab or function um, backspace. <laughs> I guess in this instance, if you're a if you're a uh, Colmac user. I feel like yeah. even if you need caps lock, having a dedicated first layer key for it, you're probably not entirely necessary. But maybe I'm just being stupid. Maybe I'm just being mean. Maybe we should move I on. Guess, I guess it depends on what people use it for, right? If they if they have a job where they're constantly typing and they need to flip between caps and non-caps, I imagine programmers might need it where they're defining variables and some languages you have to type them in capitals. That might be quite useful to just flick it on and off. Um, but for, I, I, for, for me and what I do, it doesn't work for me. But that's the beauty of the hobby, right? That's the beauty of QMK. We can all have whatever we want. That's the beauty of it. We can have any key do any function. You can have A, B, G if you want. You know, It doesn't matter. You can have caps lock, B, caps lock, or control, or backspace, or enter. Whatever you like, you can do it. That's the, that's the best thing about the hobby, really. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely anyway. right. <laughs> All right, cool. Speaking about the best <laughs> things in the hobby, one of my favorite things happens to be switches, and there are some new switches over at Novel Keys. So these are the, uh, I'm assuming it's supposed to be pronounced Nolive Cream switches. This is a pre Yeah, I guess so. Um, these yeah. switches are $6 for a pack of 10, making them $0.60 cents a piece, which is about pretty average for custom switches these days. And uh, this is very similar to the previous Novel Keys cream switches that have been up for a little while now, mm. um, but are very often sold out. But instead of using the 70-gram uh, bottom-out spring that those use, these go a little bit lighter and use a 63.5-gram spring. Yes, 63.5. Not 62, not 65, not 63. Interesting. 63.5, which is a, a weight that's becoming more and more popular in our community lately. And boy golly... I don't see why, but <laughs> it is it's what a, it is. It's a nice way. It's too light for me personally, but uh, I know that Chris uh, swears he swears by sixty three point five. I think he builds most of his boards with it, so I know it's got some popularity there. Um, but you know, it's always talking about these switches. I think both you and I, we both love cream switches. I use them yes. every day at work, and I know you're really enjoying them I in your them. Uh, series lately. Uh, they are great switches once you've looped them nicely. Um, I prefer to put PTFE in. I think you use uh, greases oil, uh, or oils. Is that right, Brian? Uh, 205 grade zero on the only batch that I have currently, and they are still very, very nice and going strong. Nice, cool. Um, so having another colorway of these switches is great, just for those themed builds, it's fantastic. Uh, and not only would these go really well with GMK Olive, if you haven't already bought that from Novel Keys, but they'd also go really well with that commando set that we just looked at as well. They'd kind of match that whole military theme too. So if you're doing a themed build and you did like those legends on those keycaps, maybe you want to pick these up as well. 
Yep. So just like the uh, <laughs> just like the novel keys cream switches that these are based off of, these do have the standard four millimeter travel and two millimeter operating distances. Uh, the spring is going to sure. be fifty gram actuation, and again, sixty three point five gram bottom out. So definitely a bit lighter than the creams previously. But hey, a lot of people probably been asking for that, and this is pretty timely ran alongside the GMK Olive Group by that's currently going on on novel keys as well. So. You know, mm. if you kind of want to color match your uh, your build a little bit more, then this could be a good option for you. Sixty cents a switch, pretty darn reasonable. I like the color, yeah. spring weight. I I've tested sixty three point five for quite a while now, up against sixty two and sixty five gram, and I don't feel like they're different enough for me against sixty two sure. gram to really warrant using them. I couldn't really tell the difference, and I generally tend to have pretty sensitive fingers compared to a lot of people in this community. I feel like. So, I don't know. Maybe not for me, but a lot of people are really into those 63.5 gram springs, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Yeah. One of the interesting things as well is it's not a, not a weighting that Kale have traditionally offered either. The only place where you've ever been able to get 63.5 gram springs from before is Sprit. And, you know, um, it's interesting that uh, that these are now available here in uh, some Kale switches. Um, and we all know that Sprit had a massive problem earlier on this year shipping personal orders because he was uh, well, maybe everyone doesn't know this but Sprit had a massive problem shipping personal orders because he was doing a lot of uh, retailer orders and I'm, I'm wondering if I'm putting two and two together and getting five or four here because that's that's quite interesting it could be interesting um, I, I feel like novel keys maybe wouldn't work directly with Sprit per se but maybe they're I'm wondering if Kale is maybe either Kale is or Kale is sourcing these springs or Novel Keys is sourcing these springs for Kale from another manufacturer, maybe not directly from Sprit, maybe or maybe not the, the factory that Sprit uses. These could be coming yeah. from a completely different source, but one thing to note is these do look gold-plated. Um, Wait, to say that, by... it says this, this switch also features a first for Kale, custom gold-plated springs, and exactly. these springs have a bottom out of 63.5. To me, that suggests that this is Kale that's doing this off their own back, and I'm wondering if that this is some sort of big order, which is why Sprit had a massive backlog, and I, I, I could be reaching here, but um, it, it could explain a lot of things. It could explain a lot of things. Hmm. And uh, in my my view as well, I, I know Sprit's had his problems and, and people have different thoughts on him, but his product is the best on the market, in my opinion, for springs right now. There, are, you know, there, There's some other good options and some good alternative options, but if you were going to rank in terms of the, the, the quality of the springs, Sprit's products do rise to the top, in, in my view, at the minute. So if these are Sprit springs, that's really, really interesting. It does make it a much nicer proposition. Yeah, but again, he does have a pretty rocky history in our community, and a lot of people don't want to use anything because that has his name yeah. on it. So, yeah, we'll have to maybe we can poke Mike a little bit, get some more information out of this, because I'd be really curious to find out some more about these springs at least. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it'd be definitely interesting to see. Yeah. Either way, these switches look great. We've already tried uh, Olive, uh, sorry, not Olive, we've already tried Scream switches before. Uh, both Brian and I love them. Uh, I think, Brian, are you going to pick some of these up? Because I know I am. Yep, I'll pick some up for sure. I yeah. actually just ordered GMK Olive the other day against my, oh, well. my better responsible judgment. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've uh, I bought Olive and. Uh, um, uh, the ramen novelty as well, so I'm probably going to pick up. Well, I will pick up some of these switches too. Um, uh, I think Mike's already got a fair bit of uh, things that I've PM'd him to save me and put me to one side. So I need to add these to that list as well. Yep. So uh, the pre-order actually won't be open for too long. These close in nine days, June 29th. So um, I don't remember exactly which day these went up, but it wasn't too long ago. So this is a fairly short run. I feel like these aren't open very long, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is short, but hey, I'm sure that'll do well. Yep, probably. A lot of people trying to color match with that GMK olive, I bet. Absolutely, and and of course that Commander 2020 set. Don't forget that. And lots of people want yeah. to color. Are you are you going to get that set, Jay? Um, I feel like you no, have to now. No, I've I've already got a couple of them. I've got the original Commander 23. I've got the 2018, which was kind of a white and gray theme set in kind of oblivion sort of colorway. Um, I don't think I'm going to pick up the khaki one. But I, I don't dislike it. Yeah, I just don't feel like any another version of that set, to be honest. That's fair. That's fair. Talisman Solutions gifting a tier one sub to Visionaire. Thank you so much for that, my friend. Thank you, man. Thank you. And uh, that's actually going to wrap up our news doc for today. So I told you guys, pretty short and sweet. 
not a whole lot of things going on. So we are going to move into our Q&A in just a moment after we talk a little bit about our sponsors. So make sure you prep your questions now. Use the at top tag tag so we can see them a lot easier. And we'd appreciate that. So let me talk a little bit about uh, Zeal. So Zeal Generation, our first sponsor of the day. Uh, lots of different keyboard switch products in stock. Some of the most popular switches on the market right now. I've used them. I love them. Jay's used them. Jay loves them. They got you covered no matter what you're looking for. Linear switches, tactile switches, silent switches of either varieties, as well as some nice stabilizers, PCBs, and the like. Make sure if you are ordering from Zeal Generation and you do want to support TalkClack, you use our affiliate link, zealpc.net slash TalkClack. Helps us out so much more than you might think. So please consider using that if you'd like to support us while buying from Zeal. Yeah, it does make a massive difference, guys. So your support is genuinely appreciated if you do use that. Uh, next up, we've got Novel Keys. Uh, so I know we've just been looking at uh, the Novel Keys site, uh, but we'll just give you a quick update on what's uh, what's still live there. So if you are still looking for a good key set, GMK Olive is still up there for uh, a, a little while longer. So this is uh, a full olive theme key set, uh, the second one from Olivia. Uh, and again, you can pair that with those lovely uh, cream switches that we just talked about a few minutes ago, if that's your cup of tea as well. Um, additionally to that, you can also look at the Yok Panda sticker pack. So if you want some really, really cute stickers, and I've ordered a pack of these myself. Um, they haven't come yet, but I can't wait for them to come. I want to put them all over my MacBook. Uh, these are the cutest stickers in the world. Uh, all of the different Yok Panda variants um, doing a little wave and being really cute and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting those in. They're, they're quite possibly the best stickers in the community. The right Mint uh, Panda sticker is so adorable. Look how weird it is. All are, yeah, <laughs> it's just great. Uh, so you could do that as well um, if you do want to support us as well uh, we do have a promo code we don't get a kickback from this but it just shows how much you love uh, Top Clack 2 Mike you can use the code CLACKERS that's C-L-A-C-K-E-R-S uh, that will get you a discount on anything that's not in group buy so anything that's an in stock product that will get you 5% discount uh, across uh, everything in store so that's not on the group buy so that's not on uh, Jim K. Olivia sadly but anything that's in stock Yep, there you go. Next up, we have Kono.store, where you can find products from Input Club, another one of our sponsors. And they have a few things going on right now, including the uh, Commando 2020 key set that we had talked about earlier. That's going on right now, as well as, if the site loads a little bit faster, please, thank you. Um, we have the <laughs> Kira Stealth, which is still in Group Buy right now. If you wanted the Kira, but you wanted more of a nicer all-metal version, that could be for you. SA Granite is still open as well. And they're actually doing a little bit of a summer sale going on right now, too, which I admittedly have not clicked on yet, so uh, I actually have no idea what this entails. So let's let's find out together, shall we? Ooh, um, exciting. All right, see, I already so, have looked at this, so I'll keep quiet while you look at it. <laughs> uh, have you? Okay, hold on. Let me see if I... Is going to the right place? Did you click the right link there? I don't no, know if I did. Scroll down, scroll, scroll down to the summer sale. Scroll down. It says summer sale right here. Oh! No, wait, it's just... Uh, there Is you it this, go. this one? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Okay, the Solar. S Solar. <laughs> Solar. Solar <laughs> Summer Sale. Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna include the Kira, the Hex Gears Nova, and the Hex Gears Supernova. So if you guys aren't familiar with these Hex Gears keyboards, they're basically like uh, really inexpensive but uh, pretty solid features for the price kind of keyboards. Hex Gear kind of an sure. up and coming manufacturer that Kono's been helping out a lot lately, and they have uh, a lot of kind of entry level products or products that we consider entry level, but are actually like pretty nice, like perky RGB, um, you know, metal frames, stuff like that. So, so, pretty inexpensive keyboards. If you're looking to kind of bring someone into the hobby, I feel like these keyboards are pretty good for. So, maybe consider that. What else we got, Jay? Next up, we've got the uh, effervescent KB defense. Uh, so this is Way Store uh, that we all know and love. Uh, no group buys are running at the minute, but if you guys do want uh, an entry level kit into the hobby, there is no finer place than KB defense at the minute. Um, so there's lots of options on here. Both Brian and I really, really rate a lot of their products. Uh, one of my favorites from last year is the uh, the KBD67 kit, which you can buy uh, and now. It's in stock and available. Uh, I built uh, one a couple of weeks ago on stream, and my personal version absolutely love it great entry kit USB-C for the price it's fantastic uh, and as well as that they've got a couple of really really nice max keys SA keycap sets available as well uh, so if any of those do take your fancy please feel free to check them out 
Yep, and last but not least, we have Dixie Mech, which you can check out over at DixieMech.com slash TopClack if you want to use our affiliate link. Helps us out a lot more than you might think. And he has a few different things in stock, including the new desk mats, which are pretty awesome. I, I can't show the camera right now, but I'm, I am using one of the Home Sweet Home ones right now. It's pretty awesome. He also has this kind of nice uh, floral design going on, as well as one that uh, includes some skulls. If oh, that's actually, that's the point. I didn't show it off last week, but that's actually the one that uh, Dixie sent me. I'm using that right now. I'm not sure I can get it on camera. Let's see if I can hold this up without okay, destroying I, my I, desk. I have too many things okay. on my desk map to just pull it up and show, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I've, I've just knocked things all over. I can show a corner of it, but there you go, guys. There's a skull and crossbones on it. It's really nice. It really fits my uh, my chocolate-themed build from the KBD67 that I did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so very, very big thanks to Dixie for uh, finishing off that kind of colorway on my desk. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So aside from that, he does have SA Bliss launching on July 1st. So if that's a key set you're looking forward to, then, uh, you know, there you go. Just, just, just an aside, that, that looks so freaking great on that TMO 50. On the Look TMO, that looks amazing. Yeah, you're right. It looks so good. That little, that little smiling keycap in the in the left there, I, I think that looks fantastic. That's yeah. pretty yeah. adorable. I hadn't actually seen this picture before now either, but now I'm like, crap, do I have to get this set too? <laughs> it looks great. It, it it would it would look really really good on my um, my rose gold TMO fifty, wouldn't it? Look better on my TMO fifty mm. though. Probably. Uh, Pro mm. pro probably. So there you go. Make sure while you're over at Dixieback, you use dixieback.com slash top plaque. It'll help us out a lot. Affiliate link, of course. It doesn't cost you any extra. It gives us a little bit of a kickback. There you go. Shout outs again to all of our sponsors. Thank you guys all so much. And let's uh, let's, uh, let's yeah. first first things first. Let's see if the uh, the normal chat is working again. Yeah, yeah. On on this list. Okay, so it is. It is. Okay, cool. Oof. Yay. I'm gonna, let's I'm gonna get rid of the. Uh... I'm gonna get rid of that then. Yeah. Let's go ahead and remove that. Let's move this back in. I'm 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 just gonna blame you for. Uh... It wasn't my fault, Jay. Yeah, you say that, but. Well, Jay, we'll Jay, look at me. It wasn't my fault this time, <laughs> all right? I couldn't have done right, anything okay, different. Okay, okay. Um, anyways, um, let's go back to, to uh, our questions. We had a few start before. Our we spot. do have a few, yeah. Uh, so the first one I can find is from Boy314. It says, why are Gator and Yellows better than Novel, cre novel Key Creams? Um, is, that, is, that, is that like a start to a joke? I mean, that feels like it's the uh, punchline for us. I'm not sure. I mean, Gateron Yellow is obviously a very popular switch, primarily due to their spring, which is very unique and kind of different from any other switch we have on the market. A lot of people like them for the spring, and that's why they're a mm -hmm. popular, popular switch. Uh, creams are, are... I think creams are just a better switch, man. I think creams just sound amazing. They feel good. Um, it's, just, it's very unique. I like that. Yeah, but I, I don't I, disagree. I do like the Gateron Yellow Springs. I, I I don't think there's necessarily a better or worse switch between the two. I think they're both uh, pretty unique and pretty good. I think I think you're probably right. I think if I was going to buy a switch to keep the spring stock and not tweak the switch at all, I think Gat Yellows are probably the nicest stock. But once you've lubed and you know maybe done a spring swap or whatever else, I think creams can be much nicer. Um, I think that's probably fair. So it depends on how much work and effort you want to put into it. Yeah, definitely. Um, Nebula asking, could you cover the updates on Zombumon's tactical set or CP keyboard SAR? Um, we didn't cover an update on the tactical set because we don't generally cover um, updates. So basically the way we do most of our... Um, news topics are we'll cover it once when it's an IC interest check then we'll cover it one more time when it's in GB group by phase so we try not to cover any key set or keyboard more than twice uh, because otherwise it kind of gets a little stale um, as yeah. far as CP keyboard SAR I don't know what that is I haven't seen or heard of that yet so that's news no, to me. yeah I've not, I've not seen it either if you've got a link for that Nebula we, we can take a look and maybe get it into the stream next week um, Tenstrong uh, asking, question, Tenstrong, yeah. the feather has no corner mounting points on its plate. Won't this cause inconsistent flex? Let me, uh, I'm going to go back and take Just a look at this. Um, no corner mounting points on its plate. Uh, I don't think it needs corner mounting points, to be honest with you. I think what will create 
inconsistent flex is having that one right beneath the space bar to be honest if you want it to be flexible I'd take that one away and just have two on the bottom um, because you've got such a big area covered by the space bar um, I know that UPass has done a lot of um, heat maps on that and it, it's better to have either a cut out in the plate or to remove that mounting point entirely but I think it'll be fine it doesn't need anything in the corners particularly um, yeah I, I think in, in particular, when you're using metal plates, which are the only options offered in this particular uh, upcoming group buy, mm -hmm. um, it, there's not a ton of flex anyways. Like, let's be real. How much flex are you getting from your brass plate, from your steel well, plate, from your even your mm -hmm. aluminum plate? You're getting a I very think... minor amount of flex, but it's truly, truly minor. And I feel like people I think kind this... of have different ideas and maybe a misconception of what flex actually is and what it feels like on a keyboard. Yeah, I, th I think there's there's a difference here. I mean, this is this is using the same mountain method as the Brutal 60. And it's not about how much the plate flexes in the middle. It's about how much the plate as a whole moves when you're typing. So it's kind of more of a, uh, a softer bottom out. But it's the whole plate that moves. There's not flexibility in the plate. It doesn't it doesn't bend or dip when, you, when you're pressing particular As Brian was saying, it's more about how the whole plate moves and bounces up and down on those mounting points. So I think it'd be fine. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Which I kind of attribute to like how soft a typing experience feels like, um, yeah. versus how firm it could be. Obviously, you do have alternatives where, like, let's say you're using a, a palm or a polycarbonate one point five millimeter plate, which does have a ridiculous amount of flex and bends a lot. You know, you press down on it, it actually it bows a fair amount. Um, yeah, but yeah, different different versions of flex, and I think people often have kind of misconceptions of. Of how that's going to be because obviously you know your brass plate isn't really going to bow every time you hit a key in the middle of your keyboard like that's just not really going to happen um it, it's going to happen on such a, a microscopic scale that you're probably not going to be able to perceive it so it's kind of irrelevant at that point but like jay mentioned you know we we, we should also be looking at flex based on how much the entire assembly moves down um instead of just how it bends in the middle for per se um but no, it shouldn't really give you an inconsistent feel here, especially with the metal plates. It should be totally fine. Yeah, I think if it was like a 1.5 millimeter polycarb plate, I'd be a little bit more worried about it, but it, it, I think it'd be fine. Yeah. I don't think there's going to be any issue at all on that. And you don't tend to type in those top corners. You might have the button press up there, so if it was slightly different, it's not going to affect your typing feel. It's going to be a specific key press. Um, you know, pressing yeah. escape or pressing whatever function you've got on the top right, you know, it's going to be very different to your actual typing experience, which is just a new alpha cluster. So, yeah. Uh, next question was from Mr. Petrov saying, how do you guys feel about an aluminium novelty enter key? I love the Olivia he 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 novelty, uh, but an aluminium novelty on enter, I think might drive me mad with how it feels. Um, I think that's probably a fair comment. I think, you know, we, we usually use them on keys that aren't used all the time uh it might be a little bit different it's probably going to be quite loud uh but having said that it's going to look freaking amazing right it looks great it's a fantastic key so you know it's, i think it's one of those things you just have to put up with yeah it's definitely one of those things that's going to sound a little bit different it's going to feel a little bit different um it might seem a little out of place if i'm being honest i think the key looks amazing i really do but i would never use it even if i bought it i wouldn't even use it I would probably put sure. it on, take some pictures, take it off, put the normal enter back on, um, because it, it just it's it's more of like an art piece at that point for me. It's not about the usability factor. Um, it does look really cool though. <laughs> it does look really good. I li really like it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, next question is from Gia. It says, "How do you sleep at night when you cherry pick your praise?" Uh, I think both Brian and I sleep great at night because um, we, we can't praise our mods just because they try and outdo some of our uh, beloved patrons like Talisman, you know, it's just one of those things. I don't... Is that like... Is this an inside joke or something? <laughs> I feel like uh, I missed no, something. No, no, he's, 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 we, we missed some of his gift subs and I'm just winding him up about it. Oh. Um, so Gio, Gio did do, do some gift subs earlier on. We missed those, but we caught Talisman's um, and I think we caught a couple of others as well. So we do thank you, Gio. We sorry we missed I you. I'm sorry I wound you up a little bit there. Yeah, I, <laughs> I swear it's not supposed to be cherry pick. It's just based on how often we're able to look at chat. So sometimes during news topics, we're just so focused on the news topic. I don't really, I don't, at least I don't know how Jay is, but I don't look at the chat 100% of the time. Yeah, but I, I, try I try and to, scan it, but... I try, to, I try to scan it just to make sure we don't miss anything, but, you know, lo and behold, we're going to miss stuff here and there. Like, it's just going to happen. Um, the fact that it seems to always happen to you, Geo, <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> to say just to chance. that. It is just chance. It's, that it's that not, is just, not... yeah. I, I think you, you maybe you're just an unlucky person. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Okay. Uh, moving on, I see one jetpack tuxedo. It's asking Brian. I'm currently lubing my creams with 205 grade zero as per your recommendation. Any technique tips? Uh, first time using lube this thick. Um, generally, my first go-to tip is use the least amount you possibly can. And yes, I mean that. I don't just mean a thin coat. I mean if you can get it thinner, you should be getting it thinner. Um, I do think that you know less is more in this kind of scenario. A lot of people kind of just slop on a bunch of lube and call it good. And sure, it's going to be really smooth, but it's going to feel muddy. It's going to feel inconsistent. It's going to potentially sound very inconsistent. Um, so consistency is your friend and go with as much, uh, not as much, sorry, as, as little lube as you can get away with. Um, like, yeah, I, like I remember just, 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 just uh, the other day I was talking to someone and I, I have, I actually have one right here. Hold on. So I have um, this, little, this little vial of Novel Keys Crystal Lube MCG 111. And I lubed, I recently lubed a board for Mike of Novel Keys, and I lubed some switches for him and built the board as a Kira 80, I streamed that like a month ago or something, um, it's been a while. But, uh, so basically the way it works is inside um, these, there's a little, little, I don't know what material this is, but there's a little cap on it that goes under the uh, main screw-on cap, and there's a little bit of lube that goes on top, that just, just kind of sticks underneath the cap. I lubed the entire TKL without getting into the canister at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's how little you lube I generally lube with. So wow, like this I, I this will right, last though. me so many keyboards, and a lot of people That's like yeah, it, it's crazy because some people will go through one of these and like two or three boards, and I'm like, how do you even do that? That yeah, is nuts yeah, to I, me. I I know people that have used five mil for uh, for for sixty switches, and they've gone through five mil of two hundred five in for sixty switches, which is just unbelievable it feels horrible at that point. Yeah. yeah, and it, as you were saying though, Brian, I think just just to just to continue that, the 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 less you can use, the better. So put on a really thin layer. It's easier to add more lube later on if you're not happy with the switch than it is to take it away. So just go with a really really thin layer. Try the switch, see how you feel. If you think it needs more lube, try adding a little bit more lube until you get it just right, and then replicate that across your switches. But um, yeah, definitely go with for as thin a layer as you can Absolutely. yeah and also uh, another tip on the the creams in particular and pretty much any switch lube your springs um i like to use oil mm. i just tub lube and oil like i have um i have this i have this little tub i think this is like eight ounces or ten ounces or something just a little tub a little tupperware tub that i keep uh and i use some gpl 104 oil i mean you can use super lube oil or whatever is you know cheaper doesn't really matter that much um, you just you know throw your springs in there. I throw about one one decent drop per ten springs in there. And I just shake that bad boy up for about three, four, maybe five minutes, varying my shake. Um, cream springs in particular, the stock ones are pretty pingy, so I mm. really, really, really do suggest lubing the springs. Um, I like oil because it agree. gives you a nicer, consistent coat. I don't really like using grease on springs because it's so much harder to get a nice, clean, consistent coat by hand, and you can't really tub lube with uh, greases. So I think oil is way by far the better way to go there. Um, yeah, and that'll think, that'll yeah. help clean up the noise a lot on this, the switch. Yeah, I, I don't tub lube uh, my springs. I tend to hand lube them, but again, I use uh, an oil, either one hundred four or one hundred five, depending on what I'm doing with the rest of the switch. But yeah, I'd agree, oils are much better for uh, springs than uh, than greases are. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So next question. Uh, her C Z X F D. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. It says, "Hi guys. Is there a consensus on whether breaking in switches before looping is necessary? I'm planning my first real build and haven't been able to find anything definitive after scouring Reddit and Discord for info. I intend to use Zeal V2s and 3203 if that helps. Um, so usually I would say yes. You should uh, you know break in switches as much as you can. Uh, a lot of switches do benefit significantly from uh, from being broken in." Uh, usually I will put switches in a hot swap board, I'll use them for a week at work, then I'll take them out and I'll lube them. Uh, and what I'll do midweek a couple of times is I'll switch the, the, the switches around so the, the switches are on the mods, I'll put onto the alphas and the ones on the alphas I'll move onto the mods and then I'll just keep moving them around a little bit so they all get even wear. I do find that loop does two things better once they've been broken in. It takes better to the switch and it feels smoother afterwards as well. So in my view, um, I would always try and break in switches where possible. Just given the sheer number of boards I build, that's not always possible. But uh, wherever I can, if I'm going to use something on you know a day daily basis, I'll, I'll break the switches in first. Yeah, generally speaking, I completely agree with Jay. I will add that I think it's really dependent on a switch by switch basis. Um, mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't say that Zeal switches 
beneath <laughs> nearly as much breaking in, if any, compared to something like a Cherry MX switch or uh, oh, you know, sure. maybe, yeah, maybe some Gateron switch variations as well. Um, you know, not everyone is quite as lucky as us to have like a dedicated break-in hot swap board that you know you just use for breaking and switches or whatever like you know a lot of people are just going to have one keyboard and it's not hot swap so we, we totally understand that um there are multiple ways to get around it but i mean really just using the switches as much as you can will get you a better product the smoother a switch is before lubing the smoother it's going to be after lubing that's kind of just the way it works um, with that said, I think that most, if not all, of Zeal's lineup doesn't really need break-in. I haven't noticed a huge benefit, whether I break him in or not. Um, not nearly as much as a lot of other switches on the market. So I, I think you would be okay without breaking in your Zeal switches. But if you wanted to, you might notice a minor benefit from that. Um, my goal is usually really heavy use for anywhere from like one to three weeks, depending on the switch. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, next one, oh, Nebulance linked to the uh, the SAR, the SAR board. I'm just going to open that up. SAR, uh, isn't this the Vern? Uh, no, that that's the the, the SAR apparently. Um, oh, I see, oh, okay, it's it's an eighteen hundred. Sorry, it's not a DKL. My apologies. Um, okay, so it's a Vern styled eighteen hundred CP. Yeah, yeah, it's a CP um, based on the Vern style. Okay, it, cool. it's nice. I like that. Yeah. Um, I don't dislike it. I, it. It's very reminiscent of the uh, uh, the cipher that I built recently. Um, I think there's been a couple of other boards. I know Heine's done one as well, but I think that's all right. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, that looks pretty nice. I like the way the Vern looks. So I, I you know, <laughs> in the same vein, I like the way that this looks. Uh, Four point five millimeter gasket mount. That's that's pretty new. That's pretty different. I'd try that. Um, yeah, other than that, it looks pretty good. I mean, I, I expect I expect high quality things from Zombubon, and he tends to always deliver on that. So I'm sure this, yeah, I'm sure cool. this is yeah. probably going to be pretty nice. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Upas is asking what build streams are coming up. So tomorrow I'll be doing a build stream of a TGR nine ten RE aluminum edition. Um, yes, I got that title right, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be tomorrow for me. I'm going to be lubing some Helios for that tonight. That's going to be not mine, unfortunately. It's going to be for a customer. But, uh, yeah, I'll be doing that. And then Jay has one on Sunday as well. Yeah, I'll be doing a serious, uh, a POM series, which is just here. I'll be building this on Sunday. Um, and then after that, I've got I've got about four or five boards that are in the post at the minute, so I have no idea what will be the week after. Um, but uh, I might uh, do a bit of a vote in Discord and see what people want to do, because I've got the Profit from Cable Car Designs coming. Uh, I've got the Equinox board from uh, Pona coming. Um, I've got the uh, Dora, which I've still not built yet, but I'm really disappointed with, so I probably won't build it anytime soon. Um, I've got a the JO2 prototype has arrived, um, which we might talk about next week a little bit more detail. Um, that's another interesting thing that's coming. Um, I've got the unicorn coming as well, so lots and lots of things in the post at the minute. So we'll we'll, we'll see how we uh, we do. But this week it'll be the series, and after that, I, I, I don't know. It'll be one of those boards that's coming. Don't know which order though yet. Nice. Uh, Ten strong is asking how many inks did you each snag? Got a hundred myself. Um, I didn't get any. Uh, I already have a bunch in my Kepler currently, and I have enough left over for a 60% build. And that's that's about enough, as enough that I would ever need. I don't really like to duplicate switches very often, <clears throat> and if I do, I try to do something very, like, wildly different between the two. So sure. uh, I, I'll never need more than two boards worth of a single switch, really. That's fair, that's fair. Um, I asked Mike, because I was asleep when they went live, so I was worried that we were going to run out. So I asked Mike to put me enough for a couple of boards away. So I assume that is probably 120. I need to sort that out with him. And then I've got a draw full. I think I've got 120 in the draw. So I've got about 250 ish, something like that, inks. Uh, oh, and interestingly as well, something I did buy this week was uh, I don't know if anyone else saw this, but on Taobao there was actually coloured ink switches. So they had red, uh, blue, and yellow versions of the uh, the traditional black ink switch that we've seen. Um, so I've picked up seventy of each of those, and we'll give them a try on stream at some point and see what they're like. Cool. So, so the stem is a different color, or the housing is a different color? Uh, both the stem and the housing. So the whole thing um... is uh, is different color. Um, 
I'll try and find the tab out link. Interesting. I haven't I haven't seen that yet. I definitely want to see that though. Um well, Jay looks for that. Thank you very much, Tokyo Coffee Nerd, for the tier one sub for five months. Appreciate that, my friend. Always good to see you in chat. Sort through some other questions as well. Um, make sure, you guys, if you have questions, use the at top clack tag. That helps so much more than you think. Um, Ron, sure. Ron DG asking Jay, what type of vibration dampening material did you use in your J01? Uh, so I used that uh, nitrile rubber. I can't remember the exact specification, but I did use that. Uh, it was just uh, three layers of nitrile rubber. Um, if you're really interested, if you ping me after the show, I can dig out the specifications for it. Um, I've just pasted a link in the chat, Brian, if you want to have a look at the color links. It is a tab link, so it's probably a little bit dodgy. Um, but you can see that there's <laughs> different uh, variations of the ink switch on there. There's a the yellow version, which has got the dust proof wow. stamp, and then okay. a red and a blue. So I've ordered 70 of each color. Um, I'll probably send you the light ones because I don't really like lighter ones. And I'll keep them to myself. That sounds good um, to me. Yeah, well, or I'll bring them over when I come to Seattle if if I've got them by then. That looks. They look really cool. Yeah, they um, look great, don't they? they I didn't. Look good. I didn't actually know that Gateron had a uh, a dustproof design, a box design. That's news to me. Uh, yeah, they've had it for a long, long time. I think a lot of the really old Gat switches had the dustproof caps. Um, I think that's a really, really old stem design. So uh, interesting, there is, or there, there was the other day, there was some pictures of the yellow one not having that and just having the standard stem. So I don't know if that's something that will definitely feature on there or not. Uh, and I do know that uh, Mike's got some of these coming as well. He's got two of each, I think, already as samples. Um, and he's going to have these in stock at some point in the near future too. Um, but yeah, we'll see uh, the, See how this group back goes. The blue and red ones are just so vibrant, man. That looks... Yeah, they're that's, really bright. That's good. They? Yeah. yeah. That's nice. I like that. Uh, yeah, let's let's check that out. How much do those cost yeah. here? 100 and, 175 yuan? I don't I don't know how much that is. Uh, if I remember rightly, it was about twenty five dollars for thirty five. So it was thirty five in each pack. So it's about twenty five dollars. So if you wanted seventy, I think it was just about fifty dollars. Um, oh, okay. Seventy of each, which is it's a little bit on the expensive side, but it's not massively that's, out of. That's about what you'd pay for them on novel keys. I think they're around yeah, exactly. around eighty cents exactly. a switch ish. Yeah. Yeah. So novel keys, obviously, will be stocking some of these as well. If anyone wants to to wait for that, good to know. All right, I've lost my uh, Twitch chat, so I'm going to try and get that back. There we go. Um, bup, 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 bup. yeah, I've pasted the tab out link in there now. I can see that was a question. Um. Hmm. Ten strong posting an Instagram link, which I have open, and he asks, "Which can you name?" And it's just a bunch of different switches. It's a bunch of different oh, Gatoron okay. switches. Uh, I could probably name all of these. Go on, then start start top left and work your way down. I think. Hold on, maybe not. Hold on, wait. Top left. Uh, it's so hard without being able to see the bottoms too. Yeah. Maybe it's, maybe it's... I can't. I mean, it looks like the Fay are in the middle. Yeah. The top right, I think, are... Are those orange? Are those, like, the exclusive orange Gatorons? Uh, they might be. Um, there's the pink ones from... Uh, from Okonomiyaki, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's there, yeah. And then there's... Uh, uh, and then the four uh, ink colors, yeah. The four, the four ink colors. Uh, the bottom left is just a Gateron clear, I think. Translucent top, yeah. clear stem. Um, yeah, right at the very bottom of the pick, we've got just standard gap blacks with the clear tops. Yeah. Huh. Uh, I can I can see the whole whole raft of uh, zeal switches on the uh, on the left as well. I should be showing this on stream, but I don't know if I care enough. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm being honest. Um, Mountain Blocks uh, asking Jay, did you order the drug abuse program modular keyboard? It was, is, is this reference back to the uh, Dermang Scorpion? I think it was. Uh, yes, I did buy oh. it. Uh, I, I, I bought one after the stream last week. The brand, um, Drug Lord. <laughs> yeah, the brand Drug Lord. Oh, yes, I forgot that, that was the brand. Yes, I did buy one. Uh, we'll, I'll get it on stream at some point. Whenever it arrives, I'll put it on stream. Oh, yeah, uh, we're, we're may, going to may, maybe, maybe it'll even appear at Seattle if it's here by then. I don't know. Oh, man, that'd be fun. <laughs> that would be so freaking fun. 
Yeah, I can just imagine. Look at this weird Brit and this weird board he's brought. How weird is that? Yeah. I can just imagine. <laughs> this is the last time we allow British people over to our Seattle meetups. <laughs> Ruining the community. Yeah, okay. That was a joke, guys. Calm down. That was a joke. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. I actually don't see any more questions, but uh, we'll do one final call, one last call for questions, guys. If you have any last-minute questions before we head out, Get those in now. Use the at top clack tag. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, we're yeah. gonna be we're gonna be getting on out of here. Chat is entertaining itself. It's hard uh, because Brian is colorblind. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like yeah. I could get the fact that I could get like most of these. I think being colorblind is still pretty impressive, though. Just saying. Uh, Boy314 says, uh, what's the Equinox board you mentioned, Jay? Uh, it's a board that Pona ran. If you want to see it, it's limited run, I think, of five prototypes. Um, myself, uh, Upass was in that. Ahab was in that group by as well, and Chris Swires. Uh, I think there's only five of us, or well, maybe ten, but I, I don't remember anyone else being in there. Uh, but you'll see it on stream soon. Um, I'm not going to tell you any more about it. You'll just have to watch the stream when it arrives. So, yeah. Okay, I feel like I've seen it, but I can't remember it. Yeah, you might have done. I don't think it's public knowledge. Um, I know that uh, UPass has already received this and built his, so um, um, if you ask him, he may show some pictures of it. Uh, Mountain Blocks with 222 bits saying, great show, guys. Thank you very much, dude. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we'll wait one more minute for any last minute questions before we head out here. Um, as usual, guys, below the stream, you can find links to our official Discord. You can come hang out there. And uh, if you're a sponsor, not, not a sponsor, wow. If you're a, well, I guess it's kind of a sponsor. Subscribers are kind of a sponsor in a way. Um, uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. In, in a way, in a roundabout way. Uh, if you are they're, a Twitch subscriber. People, anyway. Yes. If you are a Twitch subscriber of ours and you do join our Discord, make sure you link your uh, uh, Twitch account over to Discord in the Discord settings. And that'll, uh, we have a bot that syncs it up and will give you access to uh, potentially a slightly secret channel, which uh, we may be doing some fun things with in the very near future, including um, starting today, we're going to have a rotating banner for our Discord, which will be powered by Twitch subscribers. So if that's something, something you're interested in, maybe you have cool pictures of your keyboards, make sure you put those in the Purple Chat channel. You can also find our uh, YouTube link below as well if you're uh, want to catch up on some VODs or some typing tests or other things of the sort. There you go, guys. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think we've already had some submissions for uh, for pictures in that channel as well, so we we'll probably have to have a quick nice. look after the stream and, and pick our first uh, pick our first winner. Yeah, I'm down for that. I am down for that. All right, guys. Well, I don't see any more questions rolling in, so that's going to be it for us today. We kept it under two hours. Or, well, kind of. Not with the pre-show. Yes. But if you disclaim the pre-show, it's sleep. less than two hours. So, yes, congratulations, Jay. You get to get a little bit more sleep than usual tonight. That's Aren't not you me. awesome? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Cool. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. And make sure to join our Discord link below so you can come hang out with us and all the good stuff. And uh, we'll see you. I'll see you tomorrow for a build stream, TGR 910RE. Jay will see you Sunday for a serious 60% build. And then, of course, as usual, we'll see you next week again on Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific time, as usual, for our other great episodes. So thank you guys so much. Lots of hearts to you. Ciao. Cheers. Uh, salute. All the all the good stuff. Hope you Cheers, have guys. hope See you guys later. have a great rest of your night.